There's an old saying that says you never get to know a man until you get to know a man. What we do sometimes is we look at folks and it's just it's, it's natural. We look at people from a distance and our natural human inclination is to analyze what we see, what we hear and then go at that. Right. And so we have our own opinions about Donald Trump our own opinions about Joe Biden, you name it. We think this or think that about a person having never met him, have never spoke to him. Now, some things we do get a chance to judge and talk about, such as in our circles, doctrine. Personal issues, never. We don't talk about someone's past as though that's an issue. Why? Because as I've said before, every last one of you are worthless just like me. We are $5 worth of dirt, and that's only because of inflation. So none of us have a right to sit and say, well, that person's past or that person's sin or what that person's done makes him in a worse light. Now, if a person is a believer, we hold them accountable, obviously, but we don't go back 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Hey, you see what you did? So we don't do that. We, but again, doctrine is always fair game. And so anytime that you can talk about doctrine, uh, it makes us sharpen ourselves, makes us go back to the scriptures. And so that's fair game. But how we do it also is important. I've said lately of late that I want to be mindful, one, because my wife told me to, but also it's just a good thing to make sure that when you speak about someone that you do so as charitable as possible. Not always possible. Sometimes it is. And so the Bible says, and I'll put it on the screen before I bring on Marcus, but the Bible says this, not my words, God's words. He says how good it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Of course, you see Marcus in the in the deal. So how good it is for us to dwell. But Corey, do you mean to tell me that Marcus is a brother? Well, I've said this. I've said this about other people that uh, I have no idea. I might lean one way or the other, but I don't know unless I get a chance to know. And so that being the case, uh, I will treat Marcus like he's a brother. Now, then having a conversation with Marcus, uh, Marcus is, um, he's high spirited. He's energetic, which is, which is a good thing. And you will recall, I said this before, I disagree with some of the doctrinal issues with Marcus, but if I felt like Marcus's doctrine was X, Y, and Z with his energy would set the world on fire, would, would, would be what we, I, and I, I pray for and want his ministry to grow. Amen. So that being the case, we had a conversation earlier. We said, you know what? Let's have this conversation instead of being private. Let's have this conversation together before the people so people can kind of see. And so that being the state, let me go ahead and bring on Marcus. Marcus, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great. Uh, just a pleasure uh, that you have me on, man of God. I appreciate it. Well, good. And by the way, they said uh, I called him brother. So now I'm going to get I'm going to get excoriated. But um <laughs> But wait a minute, Corey, wait a minute, Corey, because I want to go ahead and, and, and jump into some things up front. Corey called him a brother, and that can't be the case because Marcus is a denier of the Trinity. Now, you all know me. I am a dog, a stickler when it comes to the scriptures. And so for me to, to vouch for something now, obviously, I don't I'm not I'm not betting my my life on whether someone is saved. Or not. I know of a couple people that I know that are saved me. I pretty much believe that my wife and children. Other than that, the rest of you yahoos, <laughs> I'm kidding, but the rest of you guys have no idea. You might be wonderful people in the chats and then at home, you might be torturing little puppies. Who knows? So I have to take you at your word. But there are some doctrinal issues that separate us, right? So the question is, does Marcus, and let's just, and, and this is what I did with Marcus. I said, Marcus, I'm, I'm going I'm to bless you. I'm going to do you one favor because I believe this. Uh, listening to him, and his discussion about the identity of Christ, I'm of the opinion, uh, now, maybe I misheard him, so I'm going to ask him again in front of you guys so that we can go ahead and put this issue to, to, to side, uh, this issue about the Trinity, uh, whether you use the word Trinity or not. Again, it's not it's not a, a, a biblical word, but then again, there's a lot of words we use, every English word, none of us in the Bible. But So I asked Marcus these questions, I'm going to ask Marcus this now, and that'll be kind of our, our jumping point. Marcus, how you asked, answer this question this, uh, this morning, you believe Jesus is God, right? Yes, sir. You believe that Jesus is the Lord. Yes, sir. And you believe the Lord is God, according to Deuteronomy 4, 35, 39. Yes, sir. And we have one Lord, one God. Uh, yes, sir. Ephesians 4. Yes, sir. And then God says that there is no other Lord and no other Savior besides him. And you agree with that, right? Yes, sir. And so if Jesus is the Lord and you must confess that Jesus is the Lord for salvation, you are in agreement with that, right? Yes, sir. You believe that 
the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are distinct? Yes, sir. The only, yeah. And the only thing I, I would say about that is I think that's where the confusion comes. And you already said that in the beginning of the video. The words that people use to describe the distinction uh, sometimes is what causes people to argue. But there's clearly a distinction. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the way that I think about it is, you know, uh, Adam was made in the image of God. So I have my flesh. I have my spirit. I have my soul. There's clearly a distinction between how my flesh operates uh, from my soul and my spirit, but it's still me. It's just, so okay. that's how I think about it. And so, one of the things that I that I that I had said to uh, to Marcus earlier, uh, and I, I've said this to you guys, and so it's not like that. I'm just saying it's just to Marcus. I've said it to you guys. I said it to myself. Um, and I don't care who you are. Whenever we try to put it in words, and as many words as we try to clarify as often as we try to give an anal analogy, then the analogy inevitably is going to fall apart. You cannot give a human an earthly analogy to uh, the Trinity. Um, but as long as Marcus believes that they are distinct, yet at the same time equal and the same, how does that even make sense? How does that, it doesn't make sense. And it's, a, it's not supposed to make sense. You're a human being with a, with a, a, a flawed human mind trying to explain it. All we do is we accept it. So for the seven-year-old, the eight-year-old, the 15-year-old, or anyone that just gave their life to or placed their faith in Christ, they can explain the Trinity just like nobody on the planet can adequately explain the Trinity. So I think that is an issue worth dealing with. Um, I think though, for me to, uh, uh, to you, Marcus, sometimes we can say something and we have to come back and say, you know what, I probably should, I could have worded it differently or said it some, some other sort mm -hmm. of way. Um, there are, there have been, when you made the statement about he was a thought, um, yeah. well, that sent everybody, you know, wait, oh, wait, wait a minute, Marcus is going to hell. But then I started listening uh, to other times when you spoke about, um, about God, about Jesus. Like, okay, well, that sounds good. That right here, we got to fix that, but that sounds good. And so it's possible a person can say something in an incorrect fashion. But I think what happens is, and you tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong, you say something, people jump on you. The natural tendency for you or anyone else is to be defensive, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get defensive and then it's more fuel for the folks that don't like Marcus to see, 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 look at his pride and so forth. I've done that. So would you, would you think that, that that's a fair assessment? Uh, most definitely. And then I'm pretty sure you know that when uh, we have these like deeper conversations on a deeper level, I think that people, you know, the Bible says great is the mystery of godliness. And so I, I'm glad you brought that up early in the video. When I was talking about, uh, you know, was Jesus a thought? That's It wasn't that I was saying that Jesus was a thought because the argument always comes down to, you know, people want to know, well, what are we going to see in heaven? To me personally, I don't believe that's a, a heaven or hell issue. But I was bringing up how the, the Bible says that uh, Jesus was in the bosom of the Father, uh, you know, and the Word became flesh. So that was where that came from. Um, but, you know, I've always believed that Jesus is God. I've never not believed that. Um, and so really that was what that where um, that came from, that conversation we were getting into. OK, well, what are we going to see when we get to heaven? You know, are we going to see? you know, three individuals, three consciousnesses, three spirits? Is there just going to be one on the throne? Is there going to be one on the throne and one seated at the right hand? You know, that's that's where it came from. But people took the clip and, you know, they didn't take the context of it. Yeah, um, I think. Again, it is it is easily one of the more difficult topics to cover. Um, uh to, to speak about his deity um, because again from us our standpoint is strange uh, and so now here's what I've said that a person can struggle with his identity as long as they believe that Jesus is God John 8 24 says that uh, unless you don't believe that I'm the I am and he used the, the Greek ego image, unless you don't believe that then you will die in your sin uh, and then you must confess that Jesus is the Lord. There's one Lord. So everyone understands. I understand we, we were 2000 years almost removed from uh, the verses. And so the Lord might take on or has been taking on a different kind of connotation. But if you believe that, 
that he is the Lord. He is God. Outside of that, I mean, other than that, you're saved. You can be saved. Denying that, according to Jesus, uh, you cannot be. According to Paul in Romans, you cannot be. And so it seems to be that this is where, where Marcus is. And so now one last question, because someone, I, I, I want to, I, I didn't quite cover that. Uh, but you believe that he's always existed. He's eternal, right? Yes, the Bible says, and that that's where that came from, right? So if the Bible says that Jesus was in the bosom of the Father, you know, we were trying to explore what does that mean? But yes, I believe that Jesus has always existed. And that's where, you know, where they say the word became flesh. So was it was it a thing where, you know, the Father released Jesus out of his bosom? It wasn't a question of whether or not Jesus was God. It was just one of those things where when you dive deep into it, my attitude is we we don't really know for certain. We don't have God completely figured out. And it bothers me when people try to act like they they know everything. So then, you know, that's where the conversation goes. Well, when we get to heaven, what are we going to see? And I, I don't think it's a heaven or hell issue, but that's where the confusion came. But yes, Jesus has always been God. He's eternal. Uh, yeah, he wasn't. I don't believe he was created. Matter of fact, we know, you know, Isaiah 40, Ephesians 111. He's the one that sits on the circle of earth. He's the creator. So. Uh, yeah, I just it's just I think people got to just be careful with the Internet and taking different clips. Something that that we talked about and and I think I, one I think is important. One, uh, we talked about how how bad the Internet is. Marcus said and like I said personally, I love it. The reason is because you get to one see everyone's uh, true self. Uh, let me just borrow somebody. Let's say let me use my moderator monkey moves. Uh, we don't see monkey moves face. Yes, this is live, JP. We don't see Monkey Moves' face. And so Monkey Moves, if he wanted to, could just spout out all sorts of things. And we don't know anything. We don't know his face. We don't know anything. We don't know anything about him. We don't, we don't know any. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm having a conference with my, with my wife at the same time. Um, we don't know anything about him. Uh, and so he can say and do things. And we're like, huh? And there's no accountability, but you still get to see that person. But God ultimately sees them. I'm thankful for the in, for the internet, YouTube, and so forth, even for the slime, for this reason, because it makes a person like myself, or it makes a person like Marcus or anyone else. One, it's going to show us who we are, and then two, it's going to make us go back and search the scriptures, because I don't know how much Holy Spirit or how filled or how moved by the Spirit Marcus is. I don't know how moved by the spirit Tyra or Cephas is. I don't, I, I have no idea. You can tell me one thing. I don't know. I'm not with you guys. But what I do know is a couple things. One, your use of the scriptures, the text, because we have the exact same thing in common, those same 66 books. Uh, and then two, what you end up doing with the text. And so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, but let me ask you this question. Do you, do you think, and I have to, but do you think there have been some times where maybe some of the reactions that you've got, because, yeah, you have, what is it, 700 something thousand subscribers on YouTube, however many you, you got on. Uh, are you are you are you banned on 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 Facebook? On Facebook um, a couple of years ago, they you know, I have almost a million followers on there. That's where my ministry really started was a uh, Facebook. And while I was in South Korea, it blew up. And to be honest, I would like to say this to be mm -hmm. fair, you know, to, to everybody, you know, who's probably known of me for a while. You know, when I first started doing videos on Facebook, I was going through some of just the hardest, you know, trials and storms in my life. And the bottom line is Jesus changed my life. And without Jesus, I probably would have committed suicide. I was wrestling with suicide. And I knew, you know, uh, some people know my testimony. I got in a shootout. I was at the club and stuff like that. And, and long story short, like, I knew that Jesus was the only reason I was still alive. And I just wanted to share that with people. And I've always been rejected. I've never been in like the cool kids club, a church. Part of it was, you know, my mom's a white woman for black kids. We were down South. And then, you know, we came to Chicago and it was like, you know, just weird things. So um, I knew like when I make these videos, my intent was there's somebody out there like me that they need to know that Jesus is the answer, that Jesus can help them no matter like how much they had messed up. I was going through, you know, marital problems. I went to Iraq, went to Afghanistan, and it was just, it was really depressing. And it was like, you could just continue to be out there fornicating and committing adultery, doing whatever, 
are, are turned to Jesus. And I turned to Jesus and my life changed and it got better. And so when I started making videos on Facebook, um, that's it. I just wanted to share that with people. And out of nowhere, it blew up. I didn't ask for it to blow up. And the problem came, I guess, somewhere along the line. It was like people wanted to know, well, where does this guy come from? And so they started asking, you know, what what is his church background? What denomination? And then I said, oh, you know, uh, I grew up in a Pentecostal church. And then, man, people just, oh, you know, heresy and this, this. And I was a little bit more uh, immature back then. I still got room to grow right now. But uh, I got on the defensive and I got on the defensive emotionally. So when people started, you know, attacking like, oh, well, you're not valid. And it was like I felt like I took it personal because it felt like you were trying to tell me that my encounter that I had with Jesus wasn't real because the it didn't have the right label or the label that you approve of. And that's why to this day, and I'm not going to be long winded. I'll, I'll just end it with this. That's why to this day, I don't do labels. You know, people hear me say, well, that's a man-made word. It's not in the Bible. I've seen people who use the right words and then they're not living right. I've seen people who critiqued me and said I was this and said I was that, and then come to find out, you know, they're doing drugs, they're sleeping around. And so to me, it's more about the character. It's more about the fruit. And uh, that's just why I move the way that I do to this day. I, that's why I don't subscribe to like Pentecostal, Baptist. You know, when people ask what kind of church it is, we just say we believe the Bible from the back to the front. And I try to leave it at that. And I will say, man of God, somebody asked something about does Marcus Rogers believe that the Holy Spirit is, a, I think, like a distinct person. And that's always like a big thing that comes up. Mm -hmm. And I think this is another area of controversy with me or where people... You know, I believe that uh, the Bible says there's one body, there's one spirit. Uh, John 4, that God is spirit. Um, and Joel, he says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So to me, you know, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God. Like, that's how, I mean, it, obviously the Holy Spirit is God. Um, and people want to call the Holy Spirit a person. That's fine. You know, personality, whatever. I'm not going to argue about it. But to me, that's, it's just that simple. Like the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God. Like when he says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, it's exactly that. But that's another area of controversy. Like, uh, I don't, I don't go around saying the Holy Spirit is a person. I mean, obviously I believe the Holy Spirit has a personality. The Holy Spirit can talk to you, but I just believe it's just the spirit of God, you know? So that's another area. Maybe we need more clarity on. I don't think that's like a, a heaven or hell issue. I believe there's a distinction obviously between the three, obviously the Holy Spirit wasn't crucified on the cross as the son was, you know, but to me, the Holy Spirit is just God's Holy Spirit. And I don't know if people agree with that or they don't agree with that, or if they believe like that, that's what the other argument, when the Bible says God is spirit, some people believe that this is why I don't do words like, because everybody who believes in the Trinity doesn't agree when they describe this stuff. So when it says God is a spirit, some people believe there's God the Father, the Spirit in heaven, and then the Holy Spirit. Like there's two spirits. I just believe there's one spirit, like the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And I'm and if we are a child of God, you're filled with that one spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. So I, I don't know if I didn't explain that well, but you know. You okay, and you believe that 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 very that very Holy Spirit is God as well, right? Right, yes. Okay. Again, and this is one of the things. Let me just let me let me back up. One one of the things that um that I used to kind of de defend and and this was I was I was younger um I what was I I was probably uh, maybe thirty three thirty four thirty two and it was something where my mentor my pastor my mentor he was also a seminary professor uh, would just try to encourage me to to go to seminary mm -hmm. um, he would encourage me to do more study. He thought that I had a good handle, but, and, I, and so because he told me that, I said, well, I'm good then. You know, I thought that, you know, when someone compliments you, you feel like you're, you're all right, as though you've made it. Because in your position, um, you're going to get compliments. People are going to pat you on the back. People are going to say, hey, man, that was fire. That was wonderful. And half the folks that say that don't even know their own Bible. So you're getting compliments about how great you are or how wonderful you are from folks who they themselves don't know. And so I would take that, but he would say, you need to learn. You need to learn. You need to learn. Well... After going to prison, I had no choice. I had time. And so the benefit of doing time was I had time. And so I would study and I saw the benefit and how to, because one of the things he would tell me, it helps you to kind of 
one, defend your position, but then also how to articulate your position. Because we don't just gain knowledge just for the sake of, yeah, see, I got that. I know, I know the answer. No, the whole point of getting whatever we get is to articulate it, to, to share it. We want to love the word so much that we learn it and then in turn live it, which is, by the way, our little mantra here. So uh, I think, and this is what I, what I, I've said this to Marcus, I'll say it again, again to him in front of everyone else as well. I think that um, there are little things that maybe Marcus might say something that, okay, wait a second, that, that may have left, left a scratch in our head. I, okay, I was with you, then you made me scratch my head. Okay, now I'm with you again. Now, wait a second. And so this is where, uh, because Marcus, even though he's not 20, he's still, he's still relatively young. And so to me, this is one of those areas where two things would, would be, I think this would be beneficial for all the, all the younger people, either on YouTube or in ministry, period. I, I, I say everyone ought to do this. This used to be a thing that we used to do. One, make sure that you find somebody older in the faith that is that has some wisdom. Not necessarily me, but I'm just saying just anybody. There's there's some wise men out there who um, know how to kind of move slow. All right, hold on, let's take our time. I needed that. Uh, an older one of our older elders told me, Corey, don't defend yourself. Stop defending yourself. And I was quick to you said something about me. I was Johnny on the spot to to grab you by the neck or to show you where I'm right or wrong. He said, stop defending yourself. You know, you don't look good. You never look good defending yourself. Let somebody else defend you. Let God defend you. And if God don't want to defend you, well, then you don't need defending or maybe he needs you to go through it. But then also um, make sure that you are going through the word, being challenged by people who disagree or might agree, but make you. He would ask me questions. Um, did Jesus die on the cross? Sure he did. Well, give me the passages. Why did then, then not only did he die on the cross, why did he die on the cross? Why was it necessary that he die in that fashion? Why was it necessary that blood be shit? Why couldn't he have just, you know, just, I don't know, drowned? What was the whole point? What was the purpose of this blood? What, what was he saying in the Old Testament? How do we see this showing up now and being able to defend those things, not just for the sake of defending it, but there's other people. And so it helps with buttoning up arguments such as i don't mean arguments like debates fights but i'm I'm some discussions buttoning up those discussions as it relates to the trinity button up discussions as it relates to uh the atonement and salvation buttoning up discussions as, as it relates to um spiritual gifts and so forth how do these things work why do we have spiritual gifts why were they promised all those things and so it helps and so the point is i would think that marcus would um that you would benefit because you're out, it. I don't know. It, it seems as though um, you are you're out there doing the best you can. Matter of fact, I've even heard you say that before. I've literally heard you say, "I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can by God and so forth." Like, okay, well, you know what? I can get with that. I can get with that because you're not the only person. You ain't you ain't the only person that's been in ministry and said some things that you wish you wouldn't have said or been excoriated for saying something. You you're not the only one. You won't be the only one. Um, I give you, I give you a billion points for just saying, you know what? Um, I'm willing to be accountable to anybody. Uh, and I'm willing to talk to somebody like me, uh, because a lot of folks aren't trying to talk to me, Marcus, which is fine, which, which is fine. Um, but here you are something to hide. I mean, I think that anybody that loves the truth will never shy away from these kind of conversations. And I, I do see that there's a couple people, you know, in the comments saying they still don't understand my views. And I think one of the problems, uh, man of God, is I ask questions that it's like there that sometimes it's questions that people haven't heard asked before. So the the whole thing, right, where we're talking about uh, the Holy Spirit, where God says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And, you know, God is spirit. So that's just a question that when you get like, if you've ever done, and I'm sure, uh, uh, I feel, I don't want to say your first name like that, because you are my elder. <laughs> but my name, but listen, I'm, I'm not apostle, prophet, doctor, what I'm Corey. I am, yeah, me, I am me Corey. Neither, me neither, but you're, you're still my elder. So I don't want to just say your name like we're, like we're boys. I'm, I'm big on that with my kids. But, um, the thing is, I've been doing this so long and, you know, what I, what I wanted to say earlier is when people started coming 
and like, you know, telling me I was this and I was that. I'm, I know I love the Lord. I know my life has changed. Like I'm not out there living like the world. I'm not fornicating no more. I'm pointing people to Jesus. I pre I preach repentance, you know, and all these things. And maybe put a note in this. I don't preach a, a works-based salvation, even though people say I do. I, I don't believe in a works-based salvation. I just want to say that. But the bottom line is that um, I think that there's great is the mystery of godliness. So when you have people who kind of debate scripture and sit together, we get to this point where there are certain questions that are generally not talked about. And I think that's where like a lot of disagreements come. So, you know, that that verse is a perfect example when when he says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I say, well, to me, the Holy Spirit is just God's spirit. You know, people seem to take issue with that because, you know, is it like, is there two spirits? Is there a separate spirit like God, the spirit and then Holy Spirit, the spirit? And that's that's just the question that comes up when we dive deep into, you know, these debates. And sometimes people don't really have an answer. You probably got an explanation. But, you know, for the most part, when I've had these conversations, it's like, to me, man of God, God didn't ask anybody to be a Baptist. He didn't ask anybody to be a Pentecostal. He didn't ask anybody to be a Trinitarian. Like men made these words and that's fine. That's cool. Right. But to be saved, we're to believe on Jesus. And Jesus said, you're my disciple if you continue mm -hmm. on in my words. So it's like you got all these other words that we're using to try to explain and things like that. And I get it and I understand it. But I think sometimes we I guess the issue for me is everybody that uses these words, whether it's on even on the oneness side, they don't all agree when they like when you hear some people on the oneness side explain what they believe. It's like that's similar to what I've heard some of these Trinitarian brothers say. And so that's why I don't do the labels are the names i feel like you got to test the spirit test the bible knowledge obviously if they're talking like jehovah witnesses and the, the mormons and stuff like that, that that's way off base but fundamentally what is important that jesus is the only way to the father and jesus is the way to be saved and jesus died for our sins and i think if someone believes that i can work with them you know and i kind of leave it at there so i got people at my church that they believe kind of maybe on both sides of it, you know, and the important thing is to me, I wish that we could get the body to come together. And like, I would never go in nobody's church and argue this stuff or debate. Like, I'm just going to give the people Jesus and let them work out their own salvation with fear and trembling, you know, study for your study for yourself. Here, now here, here's, here's why I would step in. Yes, sir. For let's say Bobby or Joe or Mary or Sue, who's just an average lay person. That's fine. But for you, it's not. Now, I don't hold to any particular titles. As a matter of fact, we talked about this several times on this channel that uh, I'm not of Paul. I'm not of Apollos. I'm not of Cephas. Right. I'm not Calvinist. I'm not um, provisionist. I'm not Armenian. I'm not dispensationalist. I'm not. But now, do I have a leaning one way? Sure. But for you, the requirements are high. Yeah. Because no one came one night and put a gun to Marcus Rogers' head and said, listen, you better go be a pastor. You better go. You, no one did that. Yes, and sir. as a matter of fact, let me just pull this up because this is what, do I even have it up? Uh, the scripture tell, tells us, I don't I don't have it up. I'll just re repeat it. But the Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I've got it somewhere around here. I'll find it somewhere if I don't have it. Uh, the There it is. Qualification says it's a trustworthy statement. If a man aspires to be the overseer, uh, it is a fine work he desires. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, more and more people come out today saying that, you know, certain words like pastor is not in the Bible. And I, I and every time I reach out to these folks, they get quiet and I'll just run down the list. Yes, it is. This word <laughs> overseer, this word uh, episcopos, this word is presbyter, uh, this word for um, uh, shepherd is the same word. And Paul says that we ought to um, treat them in such a way, giving oversight and leadership to the flock that God has purchased with his blood. And so he says no one and so my point here one we've got to defend the text uh and you being a pastor or anyone else you desired that no one again no one said hey marcus leave the army do this do that or i'm gonna shoot you no so you did that which is fine he says it's a fine work but he says must be above reproach doesn't mean that he hadn't sinned and have a past because if that's the case then nobody would be uh the husband of one wife so we'll, we'll he check on that the temperate part this is where marcus has to say okay you know what I'm not going to, I'm not coming back because everybody has something that they're going to say to you about you. Yes, Somebody's going to say something. They're going to talk about you. Uh, they're going to put horns on your head, 666, call you all sorts of names, call your mother and all sorts of names. You know what you do? 
put that there. Why? Because I'm not a boy anymore. I'm a, I'm a grown man. And so I expect people to say some things. I expect if I'm in a public uh, uh, sector, public square, folks are going to say something. And you, and, and you do that because again, as Jesus says, if they said it about him, they're going to say it about Marcus. So if Marcus is really on the Jesus train, they're going to talk about you. And they have a right to, and you should expect, as a matter of fact, you should enjoy it because he says, blessed are they that uh, when they revile and persecute you for my sake, say all sorts of things for my sake. So that's a good thing. Take, I, take it as a badge of honor. If, if, I, if I got, as, as, the, as the comedian said, if I got 10 haters, I need 10 more. If I got 20, if I'm doing it for the Lord. Now, if I'm out here doing my own thing, I deserve whatever comes. And so you have to be one above reproach. You cannot be, you have to be, you, you cannot go back and forth. If someone has a, a doctrinal issue or statement of question, well, then you address that. I'll, I'll address doctrinal questions and statements all the time. Uh, prudent, respectable. Our job is to present ourselves as respectable as possible. Obviously, not everybody's going to respect you. They didn't all respect Jesus, but to the point that you can, hospitable, here it is, able to teach. And so what Marcus has to make sure that he's doing is though he doesn't like those labels, Marcus better be able to explain those labels. Marcus better be able to walk through those scriptures. And guess what? Marcus is not expected to know everything about the Bible. But Marcus is expected to be how to go in and research this stuff, reach out to other folks. Hey, what do you think about this? I do it. I call up folks. What do you think about this? How does this say to you? What does this ring to you? Look up other commentaries and so forth. Look what other people who are in the word, what they're saying. And so therefore, I want to know as much why so that I might be. I've, I've changed my, my tone and my doctrine on so many different things. Um, I've changed. Listen, y'all won't believe how hard headed I was when it was tongues, when it came to tongues uh, and eternal security. I have changed and it was hard. They took me kicking and screaming. I was ready to fight. I was ready to leave the church. You guys don't know the word. Y'all ain't saved and all that stuff. And so, all right, here's the word. This is what this word means. All this thing. So someone says, am I, uh, am I, am I conforming or comforting a heretic? This is what we got to do, guys. Now, here's one, two things. One or two things, Marcus. Either you are a heretic or you're not. Let's go with the you're not a heretic. Let's go with the I'm not a false teacher. If someone, and if you go, if you guys go and check the, the chats, whether it's the main channel, this channel, or the, the, the smaller channel, when I respond to a comment, most cases it's someone with a negative response. And they'll call me all sorts of things. So if I'm not, I don't think I am, the question for you, Marcus, for me and everyone else, why are they saying so? They might be nuts. They might be, okay, well, fine. Some folks you just can't talk to. You can't. But what about those that really, truly think that? Because they're on YouTube. They're hearing all sorts of things. Hmm, why? I, I told Marcus, I said, none of us ever got on YouTube and said, let's call up everybody else. Let's call up everybody else and let's all make a video on Marcus. Or let's get on YouTube. Let's all make a video about this person or that person. Sometimes we are responsible for what we put out and how people take it. And they may have taken it the wrong way because I gave it the wrong way. Or I gave them the impression. Or I could have said it better. So therefore, uh, it, is, it is up to Marcus to prove that he's not saying something that's heretical. Or he's not saying something false. Why he, you know, his, his homework, my wife's a teacher, and so in math, y'all remember, you have to show your work. You don't just go to the back of the book and look at what the answer is. You show your work. And so because Marcus has chosen to be in a position that has a high degree of responsibility, then he doesn't get to make excuses. When you were in, were we, were we in the army? Yes, sir. So you had a commander. You had, you had, you had supervisors over you. And yeah, uh, the, 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 the private, the E1, the E2, they, they can say some stuff and get passed. And, get, and be okay. But sergeant can't, lieutenant can't, right? The higher you go up, the more responsibility there is, and there is no buck to pass. And so the same thing has to be done. The same thing has to be done with someone like you. The same thing with everyone else. There is a, let me just, let me go, let me go full screen. There is a high degree of responsibility. If someone says something bad about it, it comes with the territory. If I'm getting beat up at night unjustly, it comes with it. If I'm getting beat up and it's justified, I deal with it. That's how that's how it is. And so I've got to be a man of God. 
I've someone said I, I've I've called you a heretic in almost every. No, I haven't called him a heretic. As a matter of fact, Marcus, let me back up for a second. Marcus was the one that that actually reached out to me. I just happened to go through some comments and I saw Marcus and he. It was on a video. I'm like, what what video was that? So I went back and watched that video, and I said some things at Marcus, but I thought I saw, also said some things that was also you know kind of kind of nice towards Marcus. Probably not the whole thing, but did I? Call, I don't know. Did I call you a heretic in that video? Um. Not that, not that I know of, you know what I'm saying? And the reason I honestly, that I came to your, to your channel anyway, is because I just, you know, I said, I know he's a real man of God. You know what I'm saying? We might not agree on everything. And the one thing mm. that you said that was so key and I, and I give it right back to you, but you know, I've had to grow, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I was preaching on, on the internet before it was like a popular thing to do. And there's some things that, you know, as you learn, you grow. And so I think people throw around that that heretic term too easy. The way I stand on it is, is the person doing it out of ignorance? Are they are are they intentionally trying to deceive people? Like, are they waking up like, you know what? I'm a wolf. I want to deceive people. I want to lead people to hell. I believe that there's a lot of people that they start off right. And um, as they grow, whether it is an influence to whom much is given, much is required. And then people start doing it for the money. Uh, they start doing it for the wrong reasons, you know, and, and even Jesus, when the disciples were complaining, they said, those guys over there are casting out devils, but they're not with us. He said, leave them alone. You know, if they're not against us, they're for us. So to me, I guess the thing is, where do we draw the line? And I had to reevaluate this. Where do we draw the line on what is a heaven or hell issue? And so a lot of people, they'll say, well, you know, if you don't believe in the Trinity or if you don't, if you're not a Pentecostal, if you're not a, a Baptist, then you're going to hell. But I mean, where is the where is the Bible for that? Because the requirement to be saved is to be born again. And, you know, we believe in Jesus. Right. And um, I think another problem is people. Why there's such bad theology out there. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that's another thing I want to hit on. I don't believe in a works based salvation, but I do mm -hmm. believe that that uh, faith without works is dead because you have these people like, you know, Cardi B and these artists and even P. Diddy. And I seen Usher the other day. They say, hey, I'm a man of God. I believe in Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. But if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, to me, faith means that I'm looking at the Bible and I believe what it says. And if I believe what it says, I'm going to follow what it says to the best of my ability. Now, here's where it gets crazy. The Bible says if you've broken one of these, you've broken all of them. So we all have fallen short in some area. I've Peter, he, there was arguments, there was debates about things, you know, they were arguing about the food and stuff. So somebody could say, Peter, at this point, before you got this revelation, you were teaching something that was heretical. Paul had to go, you know, and correct him. If it was up to me, I think all these men of God from different camps, we should come together, sit at a table, have these discussions, you know what I'm saying? And, and, I think it, it can't be like, oh, well, I disagree with you. So you're going to hell. You're heretical because Peter and Paul, they disagreed on some things. So what is the heaven and hell issue? I think that's where the fine line is. And I think a lot of people, their mindset is if you don't believe like me, think like me, especially when we're mixing in these man-made words, then automatically like, you know, you're going to hell. And I just think that's very dangerous. And it can also be kind of like uh, dishonorable. So I'm all for like having these conversations. And like I told you before, like, if there's anything you say on this this live, that mm -hmm. even if I don't agree with it, this is the God honest truth. It was the same with Alan Parr. It was the same when I talked to Ruslan. It's the same when I talk to my mom. I'm going to get on my knees right here as soon as this live is done. And I'm going to say, Lord, am I missing it? Am I wrong? And that's why I said when I first started on Facebook and people started coming at me, you know, false doctrine, I have a... Uh, changed the way that I explained some things because I said, okay, I, I understand that. And I understand that perspective. But if you never have that conversation, then you can't like many people run around saying he doesn't believe Jesus is God based off a clip. But now that they've heard the context, it's like, oh, okay. I understand, you know, why that was even a conversation. And so I think like if we were, if people weren't so clicked up and, and arrogant and just think everything that they believe and know is right, we could have these conversations and it would be beneficial to the body. You know, so far this conversation has been a blessing to me. Like you're very honorable, you're very patient, you know, you're not coming with a lot of uh, accusations. We're just having a conversation. And I, I think that's beautiful. And I think that's how it's supposed to be. It is. It is. I, I, um, and I, I'll be honest. 
and all of us get into this. We, you know, we get into, uh, it really depends on the time of the day, the the day, the week, what have you, it, depending on what's going on. We might see something like, you know what, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sort of semi quasi triggered. Let me just say something. And I might say it the wrong way. Uh, I, and I, th I said it the other day to everyone that I've ever said something in a, in an uncharitable uncharit fashion and didn't have it coming. Uh, I spoke out of turn or, or incorrectly in ungodly fashion. Hey, I apologize because my, my intention is not to offend for the sake of offend. I'm, I don't want to just do the, you have to be some sort of a kid to always want to just do the name calling thing and think that, you know, that that's okay. Because at some point in time, your speech should match your age and your speech should also match where you are. Someone said, well, well, um, uh, me treating, what's say, uh, I, tr I give young people a pass. Someone says, uh, Corey is explaining that young people get a pass for false teaching. No, I, d I don't. No one gets a pass for false teaching. However, I'm not sure if this is a man or a woman, but does any of you all, I, I, do any of you all have children that are saved? Do any of you all have grandchildren that might be saved? Maybe you got a, a eight, a nine, a 10 year old, a 15 year old or 20 year old that's saved, that place their faith in Christ. And you give them the mic or you ask them to explain Christ to somebody. Because it doesn't matter if you're giving a false teaching on YouTube or in the classroom. It's a false teaching. Do we hold them to that standard? No, we don't. Now, there's two things that I hold you accountable to and I treat you differently. I told this to Marcus. I've said it to you guys. One, your age. I treat a 20-year-old differently than I treat a 40-year-old, differently than I treat a 50-year-old and a 60-year-old. If you ever want to see me really get on someone, now, I'll talk to the 20-year-old and 30-year-old. My my oldest child is, what is Brittany? She's 30-something. I don't know what she is. Um, and I've got grandchildren. But let me talk to a 50-year-old. See, I don't, I don't, I, I'll, I'll get in the face of a 50-year-old because you know better. And I'm going to make you earn what you say because you should know better. If you, Because you should know better. That's how it is. Now, I treat you with respect, but that's how it is. Now, if you're a pastor... I expect more, just like I expect more from Christians than I do non-Christians and for pastors than I do non-pastors. That's just how it is. I don't know how some of these folks were raised. That That's how it's always been. I don't treat, I wouldn't talk to someone's grandmother the same way that I would talk to someone, someone's grandchild. And I speak to you because I feel like you should be able to handle, I'm not going to speak to you in a disrespectful fashion, but I expect that a 30 year old You've got how many of you all you don't you don't know this yet, Marcus. You haven't been there, but someone that's 50. How many of y'all are 50 in the chats or 60 or older? And then Marcus, what, what do you what do you say? You're 36? Yes, sir. So how many of y'all remember 36? What what were you now at 36? What was I doing? I was doing time because I was a knucklehead. But I would sign me up to go back to 36, or well, not me because I was in prison, but before then, sign me up to go back to my 30s. Sign me up to go back to when I could just, you know, because because you got time to fix stuff. But at 50 and you mess up, it hurts a whole lot more. And so, yeah, I treat, I'm, I'm going to treat Marcus and, and, and the Isaiah Saldivars of the world uh, or the let's who are some young some young folks that are out there. Uh, I think I think I think he said Vlad is, is in his 30s. But these these 30 year olds that are out there um, speaking, K-Dub, he's in his 30s. I would treat him differently. Uh, now, Jason. He, he's old and bald, and so I'm going to treat him differently than I would someone who, who is 30. It's just how it is. I, how you guys don't get that, I don't understand. And so, yes, I will treat him differently. Now, as a pastor, he's got responsibilities irrespective of his age because the Bible says, let not many of you be teachers because whether you're 30 or 40 or 50, there is a stricter condemnation. JP, JP, say so, <laughs> I say, I, I've said some stuff not publicly about JP, but JP, I've said JP's young. I'm going to treat him like he's young. Why, why would I do that? I don't, I don't, I'm not going to fight with someone who's the same age as my children. I'm not sunning them or anything like that, but there's a, there's a different level. Someone who's older, I'm going to talk to them like, Hey, listen, we 50, we 60, we set, let's, let's talk about it. But as a pastor, the responsibility for Marcus Rogers or anyone else is that you've got to handle the text. Paul says, <laughs> I don't want you to exceed from what is written. And sometimes we do. Let me give you an example. It's not a big deal, but some of you say it. And I can promise you, Marcus, most pastors won't get this. That passage that you quoted in uh, Romans 10, Romans 10, 17, where it says faith comes by hearing and hearing. Most folks are going to say that that's, yeah, keep hearing and keep hearing and keep hearing. The problem is that's not what that word is. That word is a noun. It's a koe, which means the report. Faith comes by the report. And Paul is speaking that point to 
to about the Jews that, that someone's got to give these Jews the gospel. It's the report, as Paul said earlier, uh, the gospel that he's not ashamed of because it's the power of God unto salvation. And so they're almost connected in the same way we think, but it's not an overall just keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. No, it's power that emanates from that actual report. And we need to give them the report, meaning we've got to give them the text the way it says. Because all we yeah. got, all Marcus has, all I got in common is that is that Bible. And so we've got to treat that Bible like it is of utmost paramount. Why? Because what does Paul say? Now, Paul does us does a solid, Marcus. Someone like yourself, someone like uh, uh, Pastor Trey, who's in the audience, other folks. If you are a pastor, well, Paul's got some letters that's written just for the pastors. And he says in 2 Timothy, I don't know if y'all can see that, uh, be diligent to present yourself approved to who? To God. As a workman who is not ashamed to accurately handle the word of truth. That's all we got. That's our that's our weapon of choice. Um, how, how, I, I'm, you, you're in Chicago. I don't know if you, I know you said you start off in the South and moved to Chicago. So I, I'm going to imagine you're probably a Bulls fan. Um, could you imagine Michael Jordan never, ever practicing with the basketball, just showing up at game time? That's what a lot of pastors do show up yeah. without actually working through the text and making somebody make someone make you struggle. Well, what does this mean? Corey, you said this, and this doesn't make sense. Hmm. Let me go back and look. That's all I got. That's all I got. I've said this to other people that I spoke to. If I can't get this right, I need to sit down. Now, I can fix how I say something. I can change that. If I said it the wrong way, y'all, I apologize. Let me correct it. This is what I meant. It's okay with that. Um, Paul was not perfect. Peter was not perfect. John was not perfect. The only person perfect that we know of is Jesus. So I expect Marcus to mess up. I expect Corey to mess up. But it's our humility. Uh, and our our desire to to dwell as brothers, because guess what we are part of. If Marcus is saved and I and if I'm saved, we're part of the same team. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be part of the armed forces and decide. You know what? Let me drop a bomb. Let me be in the air force and drop a bomb on some Marines. You know you know what's interesting about that man of God. This is one thing that I always found interesting. Like I see a lot of guys that maybe they don't agree with me on everything. But clearly, like the Holy Spirit is telling them, you know, when it comes to like things that are going on in the world and some of the world issues, I'll see some of the videos and it's like we're making videos about the same things pretty much from the same perspective, whether it's, you know, Mike Todd, whether it's this one or it's that one. And I said, it's, it's crazy to me. This is really where my heart is. Um, <clears throat> I'm not big on, like I said, pushing any kind of denominational stuff. I'm big on, hey, whatever is in the Bible, that's what we should believe from front to back. I believe everything in the Bible from front to back, but how did, you know, to have some kind of unity, obviously we can't just have unity with anyone, but I know for a fact, there's people that don't agree with each other that are genuinely, uh, you know, men of God, women of God. And so how can we come together just to give the people Jesus? I mean, the Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says that God is going to judge every idle word. So to me, you know, you, you have to have the fear of God with every YouTube video, with everything that we preach, with everything that we teach, we're going to have to give an account. We're going to have to stand before God and, and give an account. And I think a lot of times it's like people just want to put you in these, like I always say, man-made words, religious boxes, Baptist, Pentecostal, all that kind of stuff. And I've seen people like be in the box because they're saying the right words, but then they're not living what the Bible says. And you're living on the down low, you're living undercover. And that's why I, I just, I, it's not that I'm just trying to like, be like some kind of rebel or anything, but I've been around so many different types of church people. I think that if people saw the messages and the inboxes and the things that I've seen happen behind the scenes of Christianity, like with the people who have the right terminology and the lies and the, the just the fake stuff going on, I think they would, they would give me a little more grace. And you know, one thing that you said that is definitely true, and I've been praying about this is I need healing. You know, and I've been I've been praying about that constantly. I've been rejected my whole life. I've been rejected in church my whole life. You know what I'm saying? I, the You want to call it the oneness Pentecostal peoples? They, they never uh, stood with me and supported me. I've kind of been like by myself, just kind of just, you know, me and God. Um, and, and that's fine. I know that I love the Lord, but it, it did hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Think about it from this perspective. If I really do love the Lord, Right. If I really, really do and I'm really trying to the best of my ability, 
and and people are just coming and, and trying to discredit and disqualify i'm still human you know what i'm saying like i want the brotherhood i want us to come together and have powerful moves of god and i've seen it done i've seen brothers come together who might not agree on everything and we we know like the goal here is to give people jesus and i've seen like powerful services and lives change and it's like people people act like they never got it wrong. Like to me, anybody who says they've read the Bible and they've never had to change their perspective or change the way they look at something, like when we go from faith to faith or revelation to revelation, that means at some point, maybe some of their beliefs was uh, how you would say that word heretical, you know, but then God gave you a better understanding and you grew. And so Mm -hmm. to me, like I said, it goes back to, you know, you gotta have grace for people. You don't know what they've been through, where they came from and, uh, are they doing it with the intent like they woke up this morning and said i want to be a wolf i want to lead people to hell (laughs) because there are there are people there are people who have come into covenant with satan to push you know whatever kind of wickedness and demonic agendas and nonsense that all the nonsense that we see happening in the churches because the they're doing it for the money and Mm -hmm. they're doing it for the fame so that's where we that's why i believe we just need you know a lot of discernment and i think one thing you might want to bring up too because it's another controversial topic and i've seen it in the comments is about you know my belief on tongues oh, i'm gonna bring you know, it up i'm gonna bring it up i'm yes, gonna bring sir. it up I, I have it i have it mark before we yes, do i, I want to i want to address something this is this is me dealing with the folks that that tend to listen to me uh ladies and gentlemen let me let me let me say something now i have i have i have I ever have I ever called Marcus a heretic or a false teacher? I'm pretty sure I have. Matter of fact, what, 20 times? I don't know. I don't know. There are two there are two videos when I think about Marcus that stick out that just made me just just almost listen. I had Joey in my hand. That's my coffee cup, Joey from prison. Had him in hand and almost dropped him. On two occasions. Do y'all remember what those two occasions were? Those two occasions was one, uh, one of the issues regarding tongues. We'll talk about tongues in a second. But then also about the uh the snake in the back. I, I I couldn't tell you. I, I spun around in this chair. I don't know how many times. Like what in the world? Let me get on. Let me get in the plane. Let me go to Chicago and let me go. So yes. Now let me just say this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say this. Anyone that thinks that I do not have a concern for doctrine and am not bothered by false teaching and so forth, you don't watch me. You don't pay attention because I I am. So let's just say, let's just say, I'm not saying he is, but let's just say Marcus was the worst thing ever, all these things. Couple of things, and I want to put some of you guys, I, I want you to feel bad. I really I, I really want some of you guys to feel bad. I, there's a, enough folks, so I won't say anyone by name of folks saying, Corey, you once saying, Corey, uh, you called him a heretic and now you're backpedaling. Other folks say that, Corey, but yeah, you called him this, you called him that. I just said I did. Marcus knows that. Yes. So... He and I are cool with kind of coming together. Now, do I have an issue with false teachings? Do I think that all that every heresy spoken out or every false teaching makes a person a false teacher? I've said no. Now, a person that's doing intentionally, sure. But let me just say this. Let's just say we talk to Frank, who is the worst of all false teachers. He's got a nice, a large channel, a large following, and we call him out. And he's got followers that listen to him. Let me ask you guys a question. You, you, you wonderful, awesome, lovely, God-fearing, Holy Ghost filled Christians. What do you want Frank the heretic to do if he is indeed a heretic? Maybe he's not a heretic. But what do you what do you want Frank the heretic to do? Or better yet, what do you want Marcus to do? Y'all would say, I would say, man, I would love to have a conversation with Marcus. Let's get him, let's, 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 let's break the ice. Let's get to where we can sit and talk. What do you want Mark? Well, here he is. He, he's literally here. So, Marcus, you need to this, 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 and this, bow down and say I was, okay, well, what? first of all, if any of you, and I'm wondering if any of you have ever done this before, where I come from, whether it was on the streets, whether it was in prison, whether it was in business, whether it was in a church, when you want to help someone, if you think that, if you think, now they might not need it, but if you think that person needs correction, do you correct them in public? Do you, you know what? You're this, you're this, you're this, you're this, you're this. We think that, that that's cool. That's good for entertainment purposes, but no one is changed by that. In the, in, in the deep, dark times of the night, when you need a correction, it wasn't before everybody else. It, before everybody else, you was defending yourself. 
So you have a conversation with someone and you can talk to that person. Let me just, let me just, if y'all think I'm making this stuff up, let me just read the Bible. How about, how about that? The Bible says, brethren, if anyone is caught in any trespasses, this is, uh, it's not necessarily sin, but it can be a sin. Anything that is off the track, if you think so, you who are spiritual, you folks are saying, hey, you called him here too many times, pin him down. Corey says, you are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one of you looking to yourselves so that you too not would be, so guess what? knowing that you also were there too. So what if, what if I did call them all those things? I Listen, I said before, I apologize for anything or any time that I've said something that was unbecoming or ungodly. That is not my intent. Now, my intent is to make you think about the text, make you think about the scripture and so forth. And if I could have said it a different way, well, then fine. I'll fix that. Now, I'm still going to hold Marcus or anyone else accountable to the scriptures. That's all I got. But you mean to tell me I, I gotta I gotta bring him on here and and jump on him and dunk on him in public? I don't have to do that. Men don't have to do that. I can just say, hey, Marcus, let's talk off. off. Now I disagree, Mark. The issue about tongues, salvation, and so forth. Disagree. And I've been waiting and wanting for somebody out there in YouTube land or pastor land or whatever to come on. Let's have this conversation, whether it be demons, whether it be tongues, whether it be um, salvation, what have you. I want to talk to you. Now, does that mean uh, that I need to go ahead and embarrass? Because this wasn't a debate, y'all. We didn't schedule this for a debate. There was no topic that we said, let's let's cover this. That No, we didn't say, now, are we going to have this conversation? Sure we are. Sure we are. Uh, is, is it the goal to embarrass him? No. Is it maybe his goal to embarrass me? I hope not. The goal is that we all be walking in the same direction. And guess what? This was, this was wisdom. Marcus, my pastor... My pastor uh, freed me one day. One day I was driving to the church, being a good Christian, and I passed by um, a holy, couple of holiness churches, Church of God in Christ, Church of Christ, five, ten different Baptist church, Church of Christ, Methodist, and so forth. And I said, doggone it, Pastor, we got all these churches out here. That, surely that ain't what God wants. Surely he didn't want all these different denominations. And he said, son, because I was... Same age as this kid. He said, son, let me ask you a question. Do you think that people in those churches, maybe not every Sunday, but in those churches or in those denominations, do you think that anybody in those churches come to Christ? I said, well, well, sure. So you think somebody in Church of Christ becomes a Christian there? Yeah. Do you think anybody in Church of God in Christ places their faith in Christ? Yeah. Do you think any Baptist this week or any, any tongue-talking, foot-stomping, uh, holding his uh, people came to Christ this week. We, we, yeah. So he just looked me in the face. He said, Corey, who do you think is responsible for that? The devil or God? Mm. Well, I said, well, God, I guess. So he said to me, well, don't you think even in spite of these little differences that God, not Corey, but God can work this out. God can make a person who loves the Lord come to him or place his faith in him, irrespective of the conditions. Somebody came to Christ in a jail cell. Somebody placed their faith in Christ under a bridge homeless. Somebody placed their faith in Christ on a battlefield. Somebody placed their faith in Christ on a hospital bed. Shut up with all this talking about how somebody has to place their faith in Christ. Let's, 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 I want them saved first and let's let them grow. Marcus is literally here, guys. Let me put it, let me go full screen. Marcus is literally here. This was Marcus's idea. I didn't call up Marcus. I didn't hit him up. Marcus did the one thing we were saying last year, the year before. Man, it would be great if Marcus showed up. He's here. And you say, don't restore such a one. That is, if he re requires restore. Do I think his doctor, is, is, is he got some bad issues? Yeah, I do. He probably thinks the same thing. But now we can have a conversation, can't we? Whereas previously, we couldn't. Same thing with anyone else. The the peace trees and so forth. Listen, I was never at war with anybody. I'm always open. The guy that called me a wolf, come on, talk to me. He said, well, I see your point now. Once you have a conversation, this is why some of you guys aren't what, it, what we see in Galatians 6.1. He says, but you who are spiritual, I don't mean to be mean to some of you guys, but you aren't spiritual as you think you are. If you don't want to even have the conversation with the person, see, may, may, maybe Marcus is just full of crap. Maybe he's just full of it, or maybe he's genuine. Maybe he's open. Maybe I'm the one that's wrong and I don't have a problem with it. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to uh, Michael Brown. I'll talk to Layton Flowers. I'll talk to whomever else it is. And we can have this conversation. 
Show me where I'm wrong. Let's look at the scriptures. But what I care more about is his heart. It seems to me that Marcus Rogers, while I believe that his doctrine is leaves a lot to be desired, I believe his heart is right where it needs to be. I believe Marcus really wants to get this right. And so if I'm right with well, an amen, if I'm wrong, how long will it take for us to find out that Marcus is, 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 is on some flim flam? Won't take long at all. As a matter of fact, you'll know, you'll know when I put the video up. Marcus lied to me, y'all. But I'm I'm hopeful that it won't happen. Shouldn't you be that way? What do what God do you serve that says Marcus can't 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 get right? Or what God do you serve that says that Corey can't get right? Who's the guy that you serve that says they whatever they were, we think they are, that's what they're gonna always be? What where where is your cause that ain't how you treat yourself? So yeah, did I call Marcus a heretic or a false teacher? A, a, a bunch of times. Where are we at now? Right here having a conversation. So now, that being the case, Mark, and I, I had to get that off because I, I just think that there's so I many folks. Because we do want to jump on folks. We've said this before. So many folks want to jump on the non-Calvinists want to jump on the on the Calvinists. The Surprise Calvinists want to jump on the non-Calvinists and so forth. I get that. I get that. So I'm saying, Lord, if I can be an instrument uh, of anything, now I'm not going to bridge any bridges with an actual wolf. I'm not going to bridge any bridge with someone that I know for a fact. But this man called me up, guys. I didn't call him up. He reached out to me. That 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 says a whole lot. That says a whole lot because me personally, I think that there aren't very many people on YouTube that disagree with me that will come on here and talk to me and have these conversations about doctor. I ain't talking about somebody, maybe their Church of Christ in the or, or or this or that or whatever or this or Baptist. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody that, that hey, I think you're teaching. We we got some issues. Most of those guys aren't coming on here, but he's here. He, he gets he gets so much credit in my book. It's a, it's amazing. So now that being stated, one of the kind, one of the things that you said, Marcus, was about tongues. After my whole little rant, <laughs> one of the things that you said was about tongues. And so the question is, do you believe now? I don't think this is a heaven or hell issue, but I think it's it, it, it would be wrong. Uh, you you believe that a person must speak in tongues to be saved? Or have you kind of changed a little bit on that? I would say I don't put people in hell, right? Because um, like, like we were talking about before, right? It's by faith, right? So if let's say someone is on their deathbed and they decide to give their life to Christ in that moment, I believe that God is going to honor their faith because that is according to what they know, right? But Jesus said, you're my disciples if you continue on in my words. So what I personally believe, this is how I present it to people, that tongues is for everybody, right? And there's different types of tongues, right? And obviously many people saw the conversation that um, I had with uh, Alan Parr, Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow them that believe. It doesn't say some that believe, it says them that believe. I think if it said some that believe, that would be a different conversation. But in my name shall they cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. And then the big one for me that I always uh, refer to um, as far as just using an example is Acts 19, right? And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, right? So right there we see that he's saying that they are disciples, they are believers. He said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost? since she believe and they said unto him we have not so much as heard whether there be a holy ghost so that goes back to what i would say about somebody on the deathbed if faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god right if mm -hmm. someone is just responding in faith i believe that god is going to honor it if it's sincere and i'm not going to say oh that person is going to hell because they didn't speak in tongues and that's what i've always believed and it's not my place to put nobody obviously if you got some people preaching you got to pray with crystals or some weirdo stuff and sage and all that stuff that stuff is demonic but i base most of what i believe off of acts 19 so paul goes up to some believers and he asked them and it says that they're disciples have you received the holy ghost since you became a believer so you believe in jesus that's cool right uh you're you're following your disciple that's cool but for for, for whatever reason something in paul was like hey have you received the Holy Ghost? And then when we read it, it says what? 
uh, unto them. They were baptized, and they said unto John's baptism. Then Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12. And I know you're going to break this down and we're going to get into this, you know, but pretty much he goes up to some people who are believers, says, hey, have you received the Holy Ghost? Praise for them. And mm -hmm. they they're speaking in tongues. Right. And mm -hmm. I believe there's a difference between being filled and being sealed. A lot of people use Ephesians 113 in whom you have trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation in whom after that you believe you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. So to me those believers that Paul went to, they were sealed with the Holy Spirit, but they weren't filled with the Holy Spirit because he clearly says that they're disciples. He clearly says that they're believers. And he asks them, like, if we're going to just go off of somebody saying they believe in God, and that means that they're filled with the Holy Spirit, that means that everybody who says that they believe in God is filled with the Holy Spirit. But for whatever reason, Paul acknowledges these guys as believers, as disciples, and he doesn't assume that they're filled with the Holy Spirit. So I think there's a difference between being filled and being sealed. If you believe you are sealed with that promise, which is Joel 2, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And then when I look at the Bible and I go to, what is it, Acts 10, uh, when Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which heard the word, right? Same thing, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word, the report they talk talking about. And they of the circumcision, circumcision, which believe were astonished, as many came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Now, like I said, I know you're going to hit some of this, but I'm just going to get it out mm -hmm. real quick, how, how I believe it. Some people that I've talked to, they believe that tongues is only a form like in the in, uh, Acts 2, was to preach the gospel. So they were speaking an actual language like African or Chinese. Some people, they believe that is solely what tongues is. I don't believe that, right? Obviously, because uh, here there's people getting filled in this, not uh, the day of Pentecost, right? They're getting filled in their house. They're getting filled in private with Paul. Uh, with the same thing we see with Cornelius, uh, uh, Acts 431. And when he prayed, the place was shaken. They were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And then I guess the last thing I'll say, and then I, I just give it back to you. I just want you people to kind of understand my uh, train of thought. Um, Paul, right? He talks about when I pray in a unknown tongue, I pray to God, right? And it's mysteries that no one understands. And I think a lot of times this was the issue that I had with uh, Alan Parr was like, they just, they kind of skipped that verse because if you believe that tongues is only uh, just a language that was used to preach the gospel, to me, that goes against the Bible. First Corinthians 14, uh, well, first Corinthians 14 too, for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the spirit. And then verse four, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself but he that prophesied edified the church then you put that with jude 120 about building up your most precious faith praying in the holy ghost so for me i think that and this is what i believe and this is controversial it makes people mad i believe that any believer can speak in tongues if they believe now if you've been taught that you don't need it or it's just a gift for some people then i believe that you'll never receive it because you have to believe in order to receive it and we see here clearly you know, uh, every time that someone was filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, they spoke in tongues with that evidence. At least when I look through the scriptures, Acts 10, Acts 8, Acts 2, it happened every time. So even if you don't agree, I don't understand how me saying tongues is for everyone makes me, you know, uh, a heretic or it's, it's not like I'm telling people to go pray with crystals or go pray to demons. I'm just saying these signs shall follow them that believe, right? You should speak in tongues like the Bible says, but you know, we could go further because the mm. big argument is Pastor Vlad talks about this a lot too. The difference between being filled with the evidence, speaking in tongues, the gift of tongues. Paul says there's various tongues. So that's a whole nother conversation. What may, maybe what we can do is sometime in the future have have a uh, an actual conference where we sit down and just, just go through it. But but just in uh, interim, but yes, sir. Where I used to be, and remember, I, I came out of the charismatic movement as well. And so we were tongue talking and so forth. Um, and so what we see in scripture is one thing, but the next question is why, why did we see these tongues? So let me ask you a question before I go forward. Well, two questions. One, 
has the Bible, is there ever an example in the Bible where the spirit of the Lord moved and, and there was ever a person that didn't know it was the spirit of God, anyone that was around? We don't, we don't have an example of the spirit of the Lord moving and no one knew it, right? Everyone knew it, right? Yes, sir. Whether it was a healing, whether there was someone being raised from the death, uh, tongues, what have you. When it happened, everyone knew. Second thing, the Bible tells us what these spiritual gifts or these spiritual things are for. Uh, all spiritual gifts, every last one of them, according to John, according to Paul, according to John, uh, according to Jesus, according to uh, to Peter, they are all for the benefit for the upbuilding of the body, including that passage in Jude. We've covered that before where it's not saying you build yourself up. It's for you, y'all build up everybody else up. We've covered that in the, in the, in the language, by the way, I think that every pastor, so I'll, I'll say this to you. I think that every pastor will do, does himself a disservice by not having at least a cursory understanding of, of the Greek and Hebrew, because it, it does set a lot of issues, especially when you consider that when Paul is writing the letter uh, to, to the church of Corinth, he's not writing a letter to say, Hey guys, you guys are so wonderful. You guys are amazing. I love what, you know. he's, this is a letter of rebuke. And we've got to figure out what it's rebuking. But here's the question. Why do we have tongues? Why Why did this thing pop off? What, what was being stated? Oh, by the way, when Paul references the Old Testament in regards to this, in Isaiah, it's literally a language. Jesus brings this up first. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he says, you're going to testify of me. All of our mm -hmm. spiritual gifts are to testify and to magnify of him. Now he's getting ready to die and saying that when the spirit comes, you will, you will continue this ministry and greater things, not in terms of better, but in terms of volume, you will do than I do because I go to the father, you receive the Holy spirit. And so he says in, in acts one, when you receive the spirit, what are you going to do? Be my witnesses where Jerusalem, mm -hmm. Judea, what well, Jerusalem and Judea. So not just in Jerusalem, but all of Judea, Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. So we've got three groups here, and we're going to see it happen just like that. First, it's poured out in Acts 2 on the Jews. Jews from different locations and locales, but all of them Jews, and the Holy Spirit is upon them, and we know that they speak in languages because they tell us. Then the only time that we ever see interpretation in the Bible, there's only one time this gift is ever shown, is in that very same chapter. Peter gets up and explains to those because there are people there who have no idea what's being said. Because you've got people being spoken to in a different language, in their language. Then you got those folks who, what in the world are we hearing? Then you also got the mockers that show up. The, the, these are mockers that say, well, the, they're, they're just drunk. Well, that's their job. They're supposed to be, they're, they're, they're doing just what they're supposed to do, mocking. And Peter gets up and tells everyone who didn't speak those languages what you're hearing. So you got three people there. You got those that are speaking, those that's hearing, and those on the outside that's hearing that it wasn't intended for. And then Peter is also sharing the gospel with them in their native language. So we've got all these folks placing their faith in Christ to the tune of 3,000 men, who knows even more, adding the women and children that day because the gospel magnification of Christ went out in different languages and in their native language. So it's the only time, by the way, the only time in the scriptures where we actually see and understand what was spoken in these languages. When we go to Acts 8, the second group, Paul says, I mean, Jesus says to Samaria. Well, then the Samaritans received the Holy Spirit. We presume it was tongues because Simon sees something, hears something, and wants to buy it. So all we know is that they have these tongues. That's, that's what we assume. So we'll, we'll go and say that the tongues, we see tongues in Acts 2 with the Jews and then with, with, the, with the Samaritans. Then the next group is going to be the uh, Gentiles in Acts 10. They received the Holy Spirit and the Jews marveled. There's a reason why. Because what we don't have, there's two reasons why we see tongues. One, as Jesus says, to give the gospel. And then two, as a sign to those people who don't believe these unbelieving Jews. Because Paul makes that point in 1 Corinthians 14, referring back to Isaiah. Because remember, God is trying to make the Jews jealous of the Gentiles to bring them. Because after this first uh, uh, outpouring, the Jews coming to Christ start slowing down. But then the Gentiles speak up, which is why Paul makes his point in Romans 9, 10, and 11. And so, and then we see it again with John's disciples. Remember John's disciples, those guys were around the countryside, look, saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven. Well, they're doing their job. Matter of fact, one of those people who was part of this group that was going around saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven, John's disciples, 
was a man by the name of Apollos who didn't, he, he didn't quite fully get it. All he was familiar with was John's preaching and John's baptism. So we've got all these groups receiving the Holy Spirit. Why? Because now we don't have a divided church. We don't have the Jews saying, yeah, we're saved and we have the Holy Spirit. You guys are saved, but you don't. They even marveled that the Samaritans and the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. The only time that we see tongues show up again is in, is in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. The very same word that's used, these two Greek words, glossi and laleo, different derivatives of it, but those two are always there. And that is, Paul is saying these gifts are for the building up of the body. And if the gifts are for the building up of the body, then someone decides that 1 Corinthians 14, 2 means that it's for building up yourself. Well, that goes contrary to what he already said, what Peter said, what Jesus says, what Jude says. It goes contrary to every other passage about spiritual gifts and tongues. And so here we're going to take this passage. Paul is what he's saying is he's not contradicting uh, the word. He's saying all you guys are doing is edifying yourself because you don't even know what you're saying. And he says that he goes down. He says, so if you're going to pray in tongues, rather than praying tongues, as he says later on, you pray in tongues. You don't know what you're saying. I don't want you to be ignorant of what you're saying, which is what he said in first Corinthians 12, 14. He says, rather, what you ought to do is when you pray, pray with understanding. And so that's, that's how I, how, how, how I see tongues. Now, let me say this. If a person believes you have to speak in tongues or tongues is valid, what have you, does that make the person, um, I think that's a false teaching that make the person a false teacher. And I don't think that that ruins a person's salvation because again, I used to believe that a lot of folks, we believe differently. We kind of come to understand it. But the main thing is whether you believe in tongues or not, you better believe that you must place your faith in Christ. So I believe that there's a lot to be, to be handled here. And so I think the whole point that Paul is trying to get out the point that, that Jesus is trying to get out the point that is written in Acts and the point that's written in Jude as well. <laughs> is that we need to disseminate the gospel. And if I go to some place and they don't understand my language, how am I going to do it? I need, I need these languages. But if I speak it in English, because here's the other, here's the last point. Can you name anybody in the Bible that spoke in tongues that prior to speaking in tongues, they wanted to speak in tongues? Are there any examples in the Bible of someone speaking in tongues where they knew about it earlier and then wanted to get it? We don't, we don't have an example, do we? On the day of Pentecost, they didn't know they were going to speak in tongues. They had no idea. Jesus just said, right. you'd be my witnesses. They had, they didn't know. And then it happened. Same thing in Acts 8. Same thing in Acts 10. The Jews were wild. The reason why I bring that up is because this, the reason why people who, if, if you believe in these spiritual gifts and the outpouring of the spirit, you never have to worry about what the person who receives the gifts thinks or what people who don't have that particular gift think. Why? Because the spirit, when he moves, he moves. He's not asking you what you think. If the spirit comes upon Marcus Rogers right now, he's not going to ask Marcus Rogers what you think about that. Hey, would you mind if I come? So if he wants me to speak in tongues or, or to lay hands or whatever, if he moves, there's not one example in the Bible where the spirit came upon somebody and what he wanted to do through that person didn't happen. Even if it was somebody like Saul or with Nebuchadnezzar becoming a cow or with David or with Samson, or with anyone, or with you or I. And so if the Spirit comes upon a person, that person, and he wants that person, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, as he gives the gift as he wills, that person will speak in tongues. So I never have to worry about whether whether tongues are real or not. Uh, I can point out the ones that I see. I'm like, well, that doesn't look like what it looks like in the Bible. But if, if the Lord comes upon me to speak in tongues, guess what Corey's going to do? Speak in tongues, because it won't be me manufacturing it. It will be him. So maybe one day we can we can kind of, you know, go through all these. Um, I can share with you why I changed my opinion on it. Why? Listen, I was staunch uh, tongues. I was staunch. You can lose your salvation. I was I mean, I was I was ready to fight you. So well, can I can I say one thing about that? Sure. Though? Sure. So I, the only thing about the then maybe not knowing that we're going to speak in tongues. I got two questions and then maybe you can just. Um, explain that. So obviously, you know, in Isaiah 28, he says, for with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to his people to whom he said the rest, wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. And this is refreshing, yet they would not hear. So I feel like Isaiah is prophesying of what's going to happen on the, uh, in the book of Acts. So if they were aware of, you know, the prophecy in Isaiah, they maybe had some idea. Now, they, did they know they were going to speak in tongues? I, I, but I would say that 
they knew it was prophesied. And then the other thing is, this is the same conversation I had with Alan Parr where we got stuck. I feel like we still didn't address 1 Corinthians 14 too. He says, for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, mm -hmm. no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the spirit. So to me, when I read that, and you can, you can correct me, teach me, but when I read that, it's clear that when I'm praying in tongues, right? Uh, I'm, mm -hmm. uh, so there's different tongues. There's the various tongues. There's the gift of tongues where, yes, you're preaching in a language. The Holy Spirit gives you the supernatural ability to preach the gospel to these people that otherwise you wouldn't communicate. But then if we say that's the only form of tongues, then how do we, you know, bring that with first Corinthians 42? So for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God, indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the spirit. And then first Corinthians 14, four, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies uh, himself. So, and then obviously Jude 120 to me, when I read those three verses and I felt it when I, like when I'm in my office and I pray in tongues, I feel my, my spirit man being built up, you know? Uh, and I, I don't know if there's people who would agree or disagree. I know that most people would say like, man, just in the privacy, sometimes I, I pray in tongues. And I feel like that, that the Holy Spirit is making intercession on my behalf. The Bible says you pray and you pray amiss because I'm just a man. So there's things that I don't know. There's things that I don't see. I don't know what to pray. And I believe that's part of the gift, that supernatural ability, you know, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Like the Holy Spirit is interceding on my behalf and praying. And it says it's mysteries to God. I might not fully understand, you know, but th there's that power there. So I've never, and every time I've had this conversation, I've never had anybody explain those three verses. Even when I was talking to Alan Parr, he mm -hmm. just kept, dancing around it and avoided it okay. and i just would like to hear that the, you know what is your i'm gonna, uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna go through but let me ask you a question yes sir when i want to speak in tongues and i'm desiring lord please i want i want this why don't i uh you saying someone who wants to do it and they don't yeah even even me when i wanted to in the times that i wanted to well the first thing i would say um right some people they don't do it because they were taught right like you don't need it it's a gift it's only for some people so but to me, me I, but for me though i was taught i, I we, we we speak in tongues so why when i there when, yes, I, when I wanted I, it there was a time where i wanted it and just wouldn't happen yep i've had it so i've had a lot of people so this is this is what i would say and i told this to you know uh, alan parr privately i've never met somebody who wanted it and didn't get it eventually. And usually when we have a conversation and we talk, uh, you know, and then that brings me back to Paul. Like if they didn't need it, like if they just, oh, we believe in Jesus and then we're filled with the spirit, why did he ask them, you know, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Like if I just say that I believe and I'm filled with the spirit, right? They believed in Jesus, he called them disciples, then he would assume that they were already filled with the Holy Spirit because he acknowledges them you are a disciple, you are a believer, but have you been filled with the Holy Ghost yet? And they well, say no. But, but remember, remember though, remember, you got these people that are running around the countryside on in John's baptism. Remember, because right in that in that same in that same passage, we're talking about remember when um Priscilla and Aquila they pull Apollos to the side. Yes, sir. Apollos was a devout man, but what did Paul, what what was Apollos known for? All he knew was the baptism of John. There are the, remember. We've got these faithful disciples that are going around the countryside, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that Jesus is coming and so forth. And that's all they were doing. We've got John and his disciples. Remember Peter and Andrew and so forth. These guys were disciples of John. They just happened to see Jesus and go to him. But there were other disciples of John that were still there. And we run into them in Acts 19. We run into them with Acts 19 and Acts 20. And we see um, Apollos and these other people. So they, they don't know enough. At this point in time, because we don't have the internet, we don't have Bibles and so forth, so it's, it's, it's happening in stages so that everyone can see that each group, like Jesus says, is receiving the Holy Spirit, and the validation of it is them speaking in languages. However, whenever we see other new believers in the Bible, in, in the Bible we don't see them speaking in languages. We never, see, we never see anyone speaking in tongues again, even in 1 Corinthians 14, because Paul is rebuking them. Now, you ask, what does that, what does that passage mean? Let's, let, let's, let's go to it. He says, pursue well, love. One, one, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So my question, I, I, I understand what you said right there. So then I would rephrase that question. Everywhere that someone was filled with the Holy Spirit, it says they spoke in tongues, right? Not everywhere. 
No, not everywhere. So where where is an example of where they didn't? Well, uh, let me run through some of these passages. I didn't. I didn't. I, uh, all, really, in most cases in the Bible, most salva- most instances of salvation in the Bible, they didn't speak in tongues, right? Uh, let's see. Everywhere someone was filled with uh, Zechariah didn't in Luke seventeen, but but again, that was prior. But what about what about? Yeah, Act that, that's 8? what I mean. Since since the new the New Testament church, okay, we. Acts- we Acts 19, Acts 10, Acts 8, Acts 2, they always okay. spoke in tongues. No, they didn't. A- even Acts 2.38, did they speak in tongues? They we, didn't. We can, we can pull it up. Uh, Acts 2.38, they didn't. Acts Maybe Acts 4.31, Acts 8.26. Um, we don't even know when Paul actually spoke in tongues. We know he did, though. Uh, the proconsul in Acts 13.12 didn't speak in tongues. Acts 13.48. They believe and they and they and they receive the Holy Spirit. They didn't speak in tongues. Lydia in Acts 16, 14, the jailer in Acts 16, 32, uh, Dionysius um, in Acts 17, 33, Crispus and his household in Acts 18, 8. Most people in the Bible, when they uh, became believers, we it's not recorded that they spoke in tongues. And so we could not say we have to at, at that point. That's a point we've got to stop saying everybody who, who believes spoke in tongues because most people in the Bible didn't speak in tongues. And we've got one time, only one time in the Bible where someone spoke in tongues and we actually know what they said. We were told about them in Acts 10, but we didn't actually hear it. The one time that we see tongues in the Bible, the one time is Acts 2. And in that one time, it's a language and everybody everybody knows what it is. What ends up happening is we go all the way to Acts 14, even though the Bible didn't tell us to, we change the definition of what it is. And then Paul reiterates these languages, these tongues in Acts 14, back to Isaiah. And Isaiah is clearly talking about a language. But today in 2000, 21st century, 20th, 21st century, we make it to be something different that, that it was not. It's all it's now a spiritual language. It's a, a prayer language. But remember, in the Greek, the same words that describe speaking in tongues, glosis, laleo, those two words are used. It's used in Mark 16. If you want to believe the longer rendering, that's fine. Acts, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14. The same two words are used. So it's not two different. It's not a gift of tongues and then praying in tongues. The same two words are used every time. So th- those aren't two different things. So when we get to Acts, I mean, 1 Corinthians 14, one, we have to remember what was said in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians 12 says, I don't want you to be ignorant or uninformed or unknowing. The word agnoein means to not know concerning spiritual things. And the, and the spiritual things, uh, 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 pneumaticon, is the word. It's not actually the word spiritual gifts, but if you want to say spiritual gifts, that's fine. If you want to say gifts, but the actual word is pneumaticon. Uh, and then same thing in 1 Corinthians 14. He says, these gifts are given for the benefit of others. And about seven, eight, nine, ten times in 1 Corinthians, Paul reiterates that the, the gifts are for others, not for you. It's for the building so of others. He says, that's what my question was. So, But the, just to be clear, in Acts 2, they did speak in tongues. Acts 10, they did. And we would have to go, we would have to go read them all. But Acts 2, Acts 19, Acts 10, it clearly says they spoke in uh, tongues. Acts 2, verse 4. But that's that goes back to the same question. No, 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 I you missed what I'm saying. You missed what I'm saying. I'm saying, I know they did, but Acts 2, 38, they didn't. And I'm saying most of the times where we see someone's conversion, in Acts and every, everywhere else, we don't see them speaking in tongues in most cases. So if we no, just, yeah. just start adding them up, and then but we only that, have that, one. Yes. What, name a time other than Acts two, where someone spoke in tongues and we know what they said. So that that's my point, right? You're saying conversion, and that goes back to from the moment that you believe, you're sealed, right? So, but everywhere where it says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit, that's the point that I'm making. Everywhere it says that they were filled, it says they spoke in tongues. Will we agree on that? No, because even no, no. Um, I mean, we can we can go line by line and read it. I know we don't have time, but but more, more, probably, more we don't we, we don't have the time because I know, I know you said you have, you have to go take more your importantly is this this is the one that I want to get though is the First okay. Corinthians fourteen two because I under I agree with you that 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 tongues it can be edifying to the body and the interpreter. I get all that, but mm-hmm. that still doesn't explain the first Corinthians 14 too, because it says for anyone who speaks in tongues does not speak to people, but to God. Okay. So when they're praying in tongues, they're speaking to God and it says it's mysteries. And then 14, four says he speaking the unknown tongue. He's edifying himself. So when I'm praying an unknown tongue, I am edify, edifying myself 
not just the body. So there's a tongue that edifies the body and there's a tongue that edifies myself. So here's my question to you. Paul is writing this letter to rebuke. He's not saying good, good, good job guys in first Corinthians, right? Nowhere. So in first Corinthians 14, which part of tongues is he rebuking? I believe so. Because the letter he's rebuking them. So what, what is he rebuking them for? I, I, I don't think that he's rebuking them because he clearly says that when you pray in tongues, right, you're praying to God, to yourself. So your, your private prayer time, when you're praying in tongues, you're building yourself up by praying in the spirit, which to me, it matches up perfectly with what Jude 120 says. But then the gift of tongues, right? If we read it, it says, not every one of you has a tongue. Every one of you has a message. So you have chaos in the church. Like the way that I've seen it is there's these moments that we've had in church and it's like, we're worshiping and it's like almost on one accord, like there's like this reverence and then one person will bust out with a tongue and then somebody will come with the interpretation but if everybody's busting out with these these tongues you know what i'm saying and, and coming with that then you have chaos you know and so the, and then you can tell in the spirit there's been times where i it's like we're worshiping and i've mm-hmm. you know different churches and it's like everybody's just silent and they're like just kind of soaking in the presence of god and out of nowhere somebody will just break that silence and bust out with a tongue and then somebody will interpret it but there have been times where somebody gives the interpretation and the holy spirit like that's not it like that person is in their emotions their feelings the same way like you see people like fake tongues and demonic tongues and all that weirdo stuff you know that's my explanation in it so there's people who would try to jump in and give the interpretation and they're not being led by the holy spirit Right. And there's people who are doing fake tongues and all that kind of stuff. So so my I guess my question is, if he's saying that I pray in tongues to God and I'm edifying myself, how do we rectify that with the rest of it? OK, let me, I'm going to run quick because I know, I know you said you have to you have to go uh, and just look. So let's let's go ahead. He says pursue love, which is the Okatane Tain Agapane, which is I pursue love. Don't pursue gifts. Pursue love. Uh, in doing so, he says Zalute, which is desire the pneumatic and desire the spiritual things. Why? In order that you would, as he says, and literally there's in the Greek, in order that you give a revelation. The word profituete means to uh, give a revelation, to prophesy, not a foretelling the future, but to tell, to infer, I mean, to, to utter, to inform. That's what the word literally means, either forth telling or foretelling. Then he says, for one, by the way, let me ask you a question. You don't have to answer this question, but if I say Marcus is a good guy, but Marcus loves the Lord, but... Well, then what comes after that, but we all know is not going to be a great thing. If 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 I was trying to set up um, one of the guys in the chats and I, hey, listen, this young lady, she's a nice lady. She comes from a good family. She she loves the Lord. She can cook. But well, he don't want to hear what's coming after the but. Right. Because but is a word of contrast. Keep that in mind uh, for one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God for no one understands but in his spirit, he speaks mystery. Now, depending upon which Greek grammarian you're asking, it's either but in his spirit or but in the spirit. If it's in his spirit, and it's kind of hard to determine in the Greek if it's his or the spirit, if, it, if it's to be taken, but in his spirit, that's game changer. That's, that's it. That person is doing it clearly in error. But if it's in the spirit, okay, he's speaking in the spirit to the Holy Spirit. We get this phrase from here that only God knows what we, how we say today. What, what is he talking about? I don't know. Only God knows. That's where this is an idiom. It's an idiomatic phrase from, from right here. That comes from this that we say today. But one who prophesies speaks to men for edification and exhortation and consolation, which is what we're supposed to do. But the one in verse two, all he does is he doesn't speak to, uh, to men, but to God. Is he supposed to speak to men? Well, what does he say in verse three? The contrast. The person, uh, in contrast to verse three, the one who's given revelation, prophesies, he speaks to men. Why? For their edification. In verse two, the only person who's getting edified is the person. Is that what he's supposed to do? Well, yeah, he feels good. Yeah, you know what, man? I felt good. I was in I was in the spirit. I was praying. What did I say? I have no idea, but I felt good, which Paul addresses that later. He says, verse four, the one who speaks in a tongue, singular tongue, edifies himself. But the one who prophesies edifies a church. Now, I wish that all of you spoke in tongues, but even more that you would prophesy. Why? It says, greater is the one who prophesies than one who speaks in a tongue, unless he interprets what the word here is explained, where we get the word hermeneutics, so that the church may receive edifying. The whole point, and Paul, we keep, if we, if we were to go and mark out every time that Paul speaks about edification or building up, you'll see the theme that Paul wants us to edify others. Brethren, 
Uh, if I come to you, look what he says, speaking in tongues. If I come to you speaking in tongues, what will I profit you? Meaning it seems like he wants to profit you unless I speak to you either by way of revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching. Yet even lifeless things. Let's drop down. Look what he says, verse, verse uh, nine. So also you, unless you utter by the tongue speech that is clear, that we can understand how will it be known what is spoken for you will be speaking into the air. So if you're speaking in tongues and you don't know what you're saying, no, no one knows, not even you. Paul says you are speaking into the air. Different kinds of languages uh, in the world and all of them, that is not one that didn't have meaning. If I don't know the meaning of the language, I am a barbarian. So look what he says. Verse 12, be desirous. So you are, since you are zealous of spiritual gifts or the word new uh, seek to abound in the edification of the church. So what does he want you to do with your spiritual gift or your spiritual gifting to edify the church? Now, one will speak in a tongue. Therefore, let one who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So if you if, if you think that this is a, a certain a different gift, like a prayer life, fine. Look what he says. He says, you better pray that you may interpret that same word, uh, dear Meneu, which is to where we get the word again, hermeneutics, to explain, to understand, pray that you will understand what in the world you just said. For if I pray, look what he says. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. There is not one Christian on the planet that should ever want to have an unfruitful mind. So what does he say? What is the outcome? What's the solution? What should I do? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with my mind. The same word, no, a was the same, the opposite of what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12. He says, I don't want you to be agno a, which is to be ignorant or unknowing. I want you to know. I want you to pray with knowing. I want you to understand. And so every time Paul speaks about these gifts, particularly tongues, because it's a preferred gift folks want to have, he says you need to have understanding and you need to build up others. And if we go to Jude 20, Paul says, but beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. He's not saying you build yourself up. No, because this is a plural. You, uh, Amos, which is y'all. He says, y'all, beloved, build up y'all selves, others, not you build yourself up individually. It'd be a different Greek word that would be used. And so Paul is saying, this is why I say folks ought to, especially pastors, need to get some cursory understanding of the Greek. He's not saying y'all build, you build up everybody else or build yourself. Y'all build yourself. Y'all build up others, which is why he says the whole coming to church being stirred together, stir up the gifts of other people. Because when you're by yourself, it's just you. You speak in tongues. What does that do? Nothing for you. I, I can promise you, you're no better off, no closer to God than me with my book, reading the Bible and praying in English. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm praying for. But in this regard, Paul says, you're just, Paul says, you're speaking into the air. Now, we wouldn't be able to go over all this because you'll come up with a scripture. I'll come up with something. So maybe we ought to just sit. You know what? Let's let's come back to this again because I know you got you to go pick up your kid or take your kid to, to what, karate? You yeah, said? I, I, I got a little time. I guess the, I, feel, I feel the same way that I did, though, when I had that conversation because I agree with everything that you read. I just believe that is in the context of, of the church because I think what we're saying is like when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are building yourself up. But what you should do is build up others. So my point is, that it's okay to build yourself up. And and like when what you read where Paul says, so I'm gonna pray, he says, I'm gonna pray in the spirit and pray with my mind. So that means there's a distinction there. Like if we if we look at that whole context in the beginning, he says, I'm praying in the praying in an unknown tongue to God, right? I'm edifying myself, but I need to edify others. So then we scroll down to where you read and he says, I'm gonna pray in the spirit and I'm gonna pray in my mind so it can be fruitful. So to me, there's clearly a distinction between praying in the spirit and praying in my mind. And I believe every believer should do that. Pray in the spirit and also pray with uh, pray with your mind. But the problem is when we pray with our minds, sometimes we can pray our, our own desires, our own feelings and things like that. And uh, so, I, you know, that's just how I look at with the Jude context about praying in the Holy Spirit. Like it's clear you build yourself up when you pray alone. But when you're in that context of church, hey, you should be building up other people. So but I got to know what he's saying though, Marcus. But but Jude is not saying you build yourself up. No, no, no. The, the, the first verse that we read, remember, we keep going back to that first Corinthians, right? He that mm -hmm. speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. So clearly when I pray in tongues, I can edify myself, right? So let me ask you a question. 
you've got every other passage. Let's take that verse two out. Let's just because that, that let's say that passage right there is debated. We're, we're not we're not come to agreement on that one. But yes, if sir. we go to every other passage talking about building ourselves up, I mean building up others or edif edification, it's always edifying others. Even Peter says you need to edify. The point of these spiritual gifts is to edify others with your gift. First Peter tells us that. So why do we then take all those passages where we say the por por point of these gifts are to build up others, then we come back in this passage that we disagree on and say, yeah, but this passage tells us to edify yourself. We don't have any other passages. And so if a person is teaching a doctrine off of one passage, that's all you have here because you cannot use Jude 20 because Jude 20 isn't speaking about a singular. But if you say yourselves, that could be like me standing in front of the crowd and saying, hey, you guys, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you build yourselves up. That's but how it, I interpret that. But wait a second. But you just said, though, there's a difference between praying in tongues um, publicly in the church and individually. So that could yeah, be I praying agree. individually. So, so, so Jude 20, even if it, take it the way you said it, could mean that because now that cuts your knees off on the difference between praying in tongues and the gift of tongues. So that, that, so the whole argument right there, right? That's where we come back to from the beginning, right? So some people believe, and I'm not sure if this is what you believe, that tongues is only like you're speaking Chinese, you're speaking African, but Paul says, right? I'm praying in tongues to God, not to a man. What is the, so that would be my question to you. What is the purpose of praying in tongues to God? There is none. You're not praying tongues. Paul, Paul is speaking to the person. Like all you're doing is talking to God. No, only God, only God knows what you're saying. He says, for, for the one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. You're only speaking to God. Only God knows. And, and so here's a question. What in the world are you saying to God? They don't know. So let's think right. about this for a that's, second. That's the Holy Spirit making intercession on your behalf. It, it can't be. See, here's why, why it can't be Romans 8.26. Let me pull it up real quick. Here's why yes, you, can, you can never use Romans 8.26, whether it's the Greek or the English. Notice what he says. He says in 8.26, he says, and we know that I'm sorry, wrong one. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm 28. I don't know why I'm pointing. Verse 26, he says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the, look what it says, but the Spirit himself intercedes with us, for us, with groanings too deep for words. Some, some verse might say with words that cannot be uttered, but this word right here in the Greek that I have highlighted, uh, stenagmois, that means an inward sign. There's nothing coming out of the person's mouth. It's the Holy Spirit that is saying something that it, that is communicating, or with these groanings that are too deep for words. There are no words that are coming out. So, so this couldn't be talking about tongues. Matter of fact, what he's speaking of in this part in, in Romans eight, he's speaking about our salvation, and so he's not speaking about about tongues, because uh, if he did, that be that would be odd that these tongues are not pronounced. There's no words coming out. They they are uh, groanings too deep with words or stenagmois. What what is what does that mean again? And could you send me that? Because I've been looking for something like that to get in the Greek and the Hebrew, whatever Bible app that is. But what is it saying that that groanings means right there? St Stenagmois. It's an inward groaning. It's a it's an inward it's an inward sighing. Let me see if I can get this to show up. Uh, let's see. Uh oh, hold on. Let me. I have to delete this to get it to show up over here. Let me move that out the way. There it is. And I got and I got one more question for you too. And then I and I got a little time, but uh, why did they think they were drunk in Acts two if they were just speaking a language? Well, who said they who said they thought they were drunk? He said these men are not drunk as ye suppose. They've just been filled with the Holy Spirit. So if I'm speaking in your language, mm -hmm. if I'm just speaking Chinese to preach the gospel, if I'm speaking like African. If somebody comes up to me speaking Spanish, I'm not going to assume that they're drunk. So something about those people made people think that they were drunk. Well, if you come to me speaking Spanish, I'm not going to say, oh, this person is drunk. Okay. There, 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 there's a good reason for that. One, when whenever we hear some, see, you and I have heard someone speak in Spanish. You yes, and sir. I have heard someone speak in Italian or French or any other language. We have access. They didn't always have access. So, so to hear all these different languages... Might not have been a normal thing, but let's just say it were. Let's just say they were used to hearing all of these languages. If we go to, to uh, verse 13, the question is, who was the one asking this question? Those who were mocking. And so this word right here, are the, this, this is the mocking people. This is in a, this is a participle. So these are people that are mocking. That's what they do. They, they That's their job. So it's almost like this, Marcus. It's like when the haters come, what are they going to, haters are going to hate. 
<laughs> Mockers right, going right. to mock. Right. They're going to say that. So he says, um, but others were mocking and saying they were full of sweet wine. This so what so what we can't do is take the mockers and take their words and put any legitimacy to it. They they came mocking. One of the things they were saying was uh, they they're just drunk. These folks are drunk. Well, were they? Well, clearly they weren't. And the only ones that thought that were these other people. Other folks like man, what is this? What what's what's this happening? Other folks, what this says, and they all continue in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, "What does this mean?" So the majority of the audience was not saying they they were drunk. The majority of the audience was they were they were amazed and great perplexity, saying, "What does this mean?" But then here comes the haters. They always show up. Um, the haters who think that they know the Lord and love the Lord or what have you, and want to get on you. They came saying. These folks are drunk. Well, no, they're not drunk, as you as you presume or as you say. And so Peter then does what he's supposed to, der, der Maneo, which is he begins to explain the only, again, the only time in the Bible where they are, um, uh, there's interpretation. And we know that their language is, we don't even have to worry about uh, what the mockers are saying because the people that are hearing it, they themselves hear them speaking in their own languages. So we know it's languages. And it was funny. In Isaiah, in Acts, everywhere else that we see this word glossize, it only means two things. It's only ever meant two things. It meant our tongue that we use too much sometimes, or it means languages. In the 20th, 21st century, now all of a sudden tongues means something else. It means a spiritual language. It means angelic. None of these things was ever thought of and accepted by the church, but now we have that. Why is that? Why do we get to change the definition of the word all of a sudden? Oh, well, okay. So I get it. I understand what, what your your belief is. So pretty much then, I guess that a lot of people would say like anybody who's praying in tongues uh, privately, and we're saying like we're feeling ourselves being built up in the spirit. Like some sometimes, like for example, I've been in situations I didn't even know what to pray for. Like it was so terrible, and then I just pray in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? And then I, I feel that power. Acts 1 8, you should receive power after the Holy Ghost oh. has come upon you. So well, I hold what on. you would what you would say is that that's not not true. Then you would tell me it's Well, hold on, hold on, Marcus. Hold on. This is what you did. This is what you did, brother. I got I got yes, to I got to this is what you did. <laughs> you say it, because I've been there. I, I'm I'm playing with you because I was there too. Yes, I sir. didn't know what to say. So I began praying yeah. in tongues. You yes, still sir. didn't know what to say. After you finished praying in tongues, you still didn't know what to say. You still didn't say but anything, I, right? But I felt a shift in my mind and I felt a shift in my heart. And that's Oh, the you felt good. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So you edified yourself. No, the Holy Spirit out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. When you, you edified yourself. Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit edified me. Okay. You said you didn't know what to pray, so you began speaking in tongues. But I do yes, recall the Bible said it's the, this is the this is a move of the spirit. This is a gifting of the spirit. First Corinthians twelve. You didn't know what to say. You prayed. You still didn't know what to, what you said. So therefore, you didn't accomplish anything. You couldn't even, as Paul says, you couldn't even give the amen. But isn't that what you read that Paul said to do? He said, "I pray in the spirit and I pray in my mind." Praying in the spirit doesn't mean tongues. I don't know where where all of a sudden praying in the spirit all because, of a sudden because, now means tongues. That goes back to the first verse that we read that sets that whole Corinthians into place. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but God. Indeed, no one understands. Verse 4, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that So that's where it goes back to me. Is it, the foundation but is it possible? That. Is it possible? Now, it, may, it may not be true, but is it possible that Paul is rebuking them? In other words, if he said it this way, here's, here's, how, here's how I say I believe Paul is saying it. He says, excuse me, y'all pursue love. And I want you to desire the spiritual things in order that you will give a revelation. Now, there's, now if, if you speak in these tongues, you're not speaking to men. You're just speaking to God. Only God knows what you're saying yes, because sir. no one understands you. But in your spirit, all you're doing is speaking mysteries. You're just speaking mysteries. But the one who's giving a revelation, yeah, he's edifying the church. Is it is it possible that how I just said that is what he meant? It's possible. Now, the question is, is it now? So, so now we got to go out and let's see, is it possible? So what I was taught to do, take both of the views, either Paul is getting on them for their misuse of tongues, or he's saying, this is how you ought to do it. 
The problem is, if this is how you ought to do it in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul literally says, I want to pull this up in 1 Corinthians 12. Notice what he says, how Paul starts this off. Pal says, now concerning, here's that word, pneumatico, mm -hmm. spiritual gifts. The, the word gifts is probably italicized, meaning that it's not there uh, in the Greek. But it's fine if you say spiritual, gift, spiritual gifts. But it says, now concerning spiritual things, or pneumatico. Obviously, he's speaking to brothers, because he calls them Adelphoi. Uh, he says, uh, I do not want, I don't desire you to be, here's that word, ignorant. But look what he says, though. This is the part that we don't speak on. You know that when you were pagans, you unbelievers, you were led astray to the mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that, look what he says, no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is a curse, and no one can say Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Well, we're okay with the second part that no one, you can't say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit, meaning you accept that. But this part right there where it says no one speaking by the Spirit could ever say Jesus is a curse. First of all, two things. One, they're speaking. Two, they're saying Jesus is a curse. Who in the world, which Christian, how could a Christian by the Spirit, the same Spirit that caused him to say Jesus is Lord, how could that very same person with the Spirit ever say Jesus is a curse? The only way he can do so is if he says something that he doesn't know what he just said. That's the only way. You, there, there's no, I, I, I rack my brains on this. How could a person with the spirit say Jesus is accursed, be a brother, say Jesus is accursed? Why would he do that? We know the person is speaking, saying Jesus is lowered by the spirit. How could he also say Jesus is cursed? Well, because he says you're speaking this word that's, th that's still there, la long or la leo, that word is still there. So he's saying something, something is coming out of his mouth that says Jesus is a curse. Do we think he knows what he's saying or not? Well, this person clearly doesn't know what he's saying. That's why he says, I don't want you to be ignorant in this case about what you're saying. And then we drop down to verse seven. These gifts are given for the benefit of the whole body. Marcus, if you stubbed your right toe right now, I promise you, your right big toe is not going to help you. What's going to help you is going to be your right or your left hand. If you get a cut on your head, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, can we just stop this for a second? Hold on. We got to stop and pause. Y'all, y'all forgive me. I just, I, I don't know where my mind, y'all forgive me, my manners, but I just reckon, I just realized Marcus is bald. <laughs> y'all, can we, can we, can we just praise God for the brother? Listen, 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 this is how I know. Marcus, this, listen, this is when I started, I said, I'm gonna leave Marcus alone. Marcus started, started uh, shaving his head. There we go. Praise God. I'm, uh, I almost spoke in tongues right there. I just recognize the man is bald. It cut my shit. Anyway, I'm, but listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm having fun. But all that he tells us to do is for other people. The greatness of Marcus Rogers would be realized not in Marcus doing for himself. It would be in what Marcus does for other people. Whatever Corey could do great is not for, yeah, I can take care of my family. I got me a new car, got TV, got this. Okay, what about other people? I don't care about the fact that you said you love me. Show me you love me by showing you love others. You cannot tell me you love, as John says, love others. I mean, love me, you don't love others. You cannot say that. You cannot tell me that you love this person and you're not concerned about them. So now all of a sudden I get my spiritual gifts and my spiritual gifts for me. No, that's never that. It, there's no other time in the Bible where God expects you to demonstrate your love for yourself. I mean, for him by showing your love for yourself, because what are the two greatest commandments? Love the Lord. And then what? Love others the way you love yourself, because we ain't never got a problem with, with taking care of us. Right. But it's other people. So if Marcus wants to speak to the Lord and doesn't know what to say, Lord, I don't know what to say, but I love you. I'm I'm I'm, I'm dumbfounded with my words. There's not enough words to say. So what I'll do, I'll just be quiet and just think about you. And I do that all the time. I just think about your goodness. God, I'm I'm lo I'm at a loss for words because there's not enough words for me to say how great and awesome you are. I can't tell you when I was in that cell crying, I didn't have a word to say, but my my tears spoke for me. My tears said everything you needed to know. Lord, my 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 knees demonstrated all that I needed to know. I mean, all you need, I needed to say. And so tongues would have done me no good. But the fact that you see my heart, praise God. What do you say? 
I would just say so then, uh, man, I, I agree with uh, a lot of what you said. Um, so I guess that my understanding would be then when it comes to like Acts 10 and Cornelius and where it says all these people spoke in tongues, even though it doesn't say that they gave uh, an interpretation in all of those moments, your understanding is that every time they were speaking in tongues, they were speaking like an actual, like even though it was just Cornelius in his house, Mm -hmm. What was the point of them speaking in tongues in that moment? Well, they had to, because again, uh, prejudice, prejudice and racism is not a new thing. Mm -hmm. The Jews didn't like the Samaritans. The Jews didn't like the Gentiles. The Samaritans didn't like the Jews, didn't like the Greeks. Rome, G Greeks, they didn't like anybody. So, right, so we got all these YouTube, I mean, all the YouTube, we got all these people um, around who didn't like anyone else that was like them. And then even that, you had different cliques. So what do we have? We have the one thing that God can show because the identifying mark of every Christian, I don't care if you're black, white, young, old, if you're dispensationalist, if you're Calvinist, if you're whatever, the one thing that makes you part of the body is the Holy Spirit. And so, yeah, you have faith. Because think about it, at the, at the beginning of faith, who had the Holy Spirit? The Jews. But then after that, you got the Samaritans, they believed, but no Holy Spirit. Then what do they get? The church sends down Peter and John, and they give validity that even the Samaritans have the Holy Spirit. So what could the Jews never say? Well, it's just us. The Jews have to say that the Jews have it and the Samaritans. But that's okay, because the Samaritans, they're our cousins. They went off tripping with these other people, but they're our cousins. So, okay, I, I, that's fine. But then Gentiles are believing. And they don't have the Holy Spirit. So then in Acts 10, they receive the Holy Spirit. And what did the Jews do? They, wow. They mar the Bible says they marveled that even the Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. So now there's a, it's a sign that these people also have the Holy Spirit. So nobody can come back and say, as a Jews might have wanted to, they can come back and say, what'd you say? A sign to the unbeliever. Yeah. Yeah. And so now you got these unbelieving Jews that, you know what, wait a second, hold on, everybody got it. And guess what it's going to be? Just like, and that's why Paul brings this up. You you guys have no have no excuse. You've seen even, I, tr I, I used you guys to be, Paul says, what, what benefit is it in being Jew? He said, in every way. Chiefly that the oracles of God were entrusted to you Jews. And what'd you do with it? I gave you the ball and what'd you do? You fumbled it. Someone else picked it up and now they're running with you and you're jealous. Which is so. What if, if that was, if that's the case, then then they were either what speaking, then their tongues would have been had to have been Hebrew, for it to be a sign to the Jewish unbelievers, right? Because if they were just speaking some random language, how would that be a sign that they would understand? Well, it wouldn't. It would. It wouldn't be in Hebrew. It. 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 it more than likely. Well, I don't know what the tongues that they spoke. The Bible didn't say. That's why I said the only time that we know what they said was in Acts two. But we know they spoke in a language. Now, their native tongue at that time in, in, in first century um, Judea, the, the lingua franca, the, 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 the main language was, was Greek. However, you got people that spoke Latin and you got some folks that spoke Aramaic and some folks that spoke Hebrew. Most Jews at the time spoke Koine Greek. So if they started speaking, let's say Hebrew, the Bible doesn't say, I'm just, I'm assuming, I'm just throwing out a language, Hebrew or Aramaic or Latin. Well, they know what that is. Like if you and I go, go to speaking, I don't know any Spanish. I, I, mm. I, I, I know a little bit. Um, um, pequeño, I even said that wrong. You know, uh, in fuego, whatever. But I know when someone is Spanish speaking Spanish, right? So right. therefore, all right, that makes sense. Wow. You mean, because th think about it, think about it. If we, if you and I, if you start, Marcus, if you go to speaking in tongues right now, right now, Marcus Rogers, and let's say you know you full of the spirit and you speak in tongues. Let me ask you a question. Would all of these doubters here that doubt your tongues, would any of us be impressed? No, I mean, I, if because it's a belief thing, right? Depending wait on what- Wait a second, wait a second. The, the belief that we don't believe that you can do it, right? Or we, we, we disagree with your kind of tongues, right? Well, the Bible says that the uh, the carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit. So, if your belief system is carnal, like no, 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 that, no. Well, hold on, hold on. But these Jews that were there, they weren't carnal. These were Christian Jews that were there. But, but how would the how would the Jews know? Like, let's say, like Cornelius started speaking in Latin. How would they? Or well, no, because he was a Roman. So, let's say Cornelius started speaking in some language. How would they know that he just didn't know that language anyway? Well, that's, that's where I'm going. 
So, so in Acts 10, we're talking about Christian Jews that are around them, right? Yes, sir. And they marvel at the, at, at these Gentiles speaking in tongues. Yes, sir. So we're talking about believers who did not believe that these Gentiles would have the same thing. And so if these Gentiles, so if, so if Marcus Rogers in front of all these other Christians that believe, let's say we believe your tongues are bogus. We believe your tongues are false. Right, right, right. And you go to speaking in tongues. Now we're Christians. We just doubt what you're saying. We, we don't believe it. We're not going to be impressed by that, right? We're not going yes, to marvel at you speaking in, in, in tongues the way we've heard you or anyone else speaking. tongues. We're not going to be impressed by that. However, let Marcus bust up in in uh, Mandarin. Let Marcus go off in 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 Greek or or uh, Hebrew. Why? I promise you, I pro Marcus. If you go to speak in another language under the power of the Spirit, I promise you. That's why I asked you earlier. How many times has any anyone has there ever been a time in the Bible where the move of the Spirit happened and even the doubters didn't believe it? Every time they say, "Well, something happened," we might we might discredit it, but every time it happens, it's going to happen. So if you go to speak it in Mandarin or something else, some other language. Even the folks that that data was like, "Wow, that is." I, the I get I get your point, but my mom speaks four languages fluently. I got a brother that looks like me that speaks like fluent German. So if I brought him on here and like you just saw him speaking German, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think people today would just assume like, "Oh, the guy knows another language." Yeah, but 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 I'm saying, but you don't. We don't think you do. Now, why we don't? I, I, you know, we don't <laughs> think. We don't. Think that? Why oh you no, Marcus! Oh, we don't. Can't me share, nah. Well, in, you know, yeah, I might know a little something. So, why you think that? <laughs> okay, and that 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 that, that, that okay, unfair. Let's I know. Just say, I, under, I understand your point, though. I get it. I get. What well, if saying. I go to speak in tongues, everybody know I I know English. That's all I know. <laughs> I know I know English. I can I can read this 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 Greek a little bit, this Hebrew a little bit, but it's not conversational. So if I if I go to uh, matter of fact, one day I, I did this. <laughs> one day I was teaching a class and I read First Corinthians 14 in Greek. And some of the words they have long syllables in Greek. And so I read it, I, I practiced reading it so I can say it quickly. And so when I read it quickly, they're like, okay, well, I said that's what those are tongues. That's the languages. Just to make a point. But no one knows, believes, and I know it for a fact, I, I don't know any other language. Don't know it. So if I go to doing it. I can promise you every single person, all my moderators like, wow, Corey is speaking in, these are real tongues. They know I don't know any, they, I, if I spoke in Spanish, they would be, they would be shocked. They would, because Corey don't know Spanish. I understand, I understand what you're So saying. the point is, if you go to speak it in the tongues that we've seen, like in the church, when I spoke in tongues, I spoke in tongues and after a while I began to fake it and like, I ain't sure. But the tongues that I spoke sound like your tongues, sound like everybody else's tongues. And nobody was impressed. Nobody. But if but I began, if, but if the person says, so you, what you were saying pretty much to like me, pastor Vlad and Pagani, like all these people who pray in tongues, like, and we say, man, it's building us up. You're pretty much saying that it's not really nothing. I'm saying what Paul said, Paul says, you're saved, you're zealous, but he said, well, what, what does Paul say about that? He didn't say, keep doing it at a boy. He says, instead be zealous for the, for the giftings that built up the body. In the church setting, though, that's that's what did I he think say in the church setting? Well, is, is, they were is, in this point. Is Paul differentiating between by yourself or in the church setting? He's not. I we don't see Paul. We don't. The Bible doesn't say in First Corinthians that he's going back and forth between by yourself and in the church setting. Because here's what here's here's the thing though. If you prayed in tongues by yourself, Marcus Rogers, yes, sir. Would would I ever know it? No, sir. No, you by yourself. So we're not talking about folks that doesn't seem to be by, by themselves. These are folks that are doing it out in public. So, and I say this to anyone that, that you you believe, Corey, I, I believe you're wrong about tongues. Well, fine, pray in tongues by yourself. And this 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 will never be an issue. But if you want to bring it out, <laughs> you, you, you can't you can't speak, think about it. You can't speak in tongues in front of me and then tell me to shut up. I can't I can't say anything about it. So Paul is addressing what's what's out there. And so you can't, so so fine. If you want to keep speaking in tongues and praying in tongues by yourself, have at it. Tongues away. But the moment I hear it, what in the world did you just say? I don't know. Well, then Paul says, um, then you need to have some understanding. Pray for some understanding. Yep, I understand. I think, man, it would be awesome to bring Pastor Vlad on here because essentially what the argument is, there's a difference between the gift of tongues and then being filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. That's essentially what the argument is coming mm -hmm. down to. Because if if you bring Vlad and you bring Pagani, they'll they'll make that distinction between the two. And I think that's where 
it would be a good conversation to have but i understand i definitely understand your perspective what i would like for you to do is definitely send me the the plug for that greek hebrew bible oh, well, i'll go i'll go is, read it i'll go study this is, it well, what sure. this is this is accordance bible software i use logos also but on online live i have this because it just shows up better i can go from one passage to the next passage to the next passage and pull up my Hebrew. I got other little stuff that goes along with it, or whatever. Uh, awesome. I think it's. I think it, it is. It is, and and it's just good. So when I when I talk about something online, I want other people to see what I'm doing. Corey, your Greek was wrong. I had one guy who spoke Greek. He said I disagree with you. I said, well, was my Greek wrong? He said, no. I just disagree with you. I said, what? Well, what? That don't make any <laughs> sense. Then. So tell me where I'm wrong. Uh, I'm in. I'm in seminary now. Why? Because I, I want. I want to get pushed. I think I, I think I know the word pretty well, but I want to I want to want I want to earn it uh, because I think that there's too many folks that are uh, my uh, my complexion and darker uh, who just are skipping education as though it's something that we need to run away from. This helps me to if I can earn my stripes and prove my point and write my papers and do my research with them, I can do it with anyone. I think I can do it now, but still, I want to earn that. Um, and so. I think that we all should just be committed to going as deep as we can in the word. Now, before we go, I want to say this to everybody else, because some folks might be joining a little late. Yes, sir. Um, we did, because I saw someone ask about, do we cover the Trinity? We did. We did. Uh, I think that uh, Marcus believes what we believe in terms of the Trinity. He might not be ready to say the word Trinity, but he believes, for the most part, there are some things that I think that even now Marcus might explain, like, okay, I hear what you said, but then that kind of made me doubt and that scratched my head. But then you come back over here, I, I get that. So on the basis of the Trinity, I don't believe that that is an issue that makes Marcus not a brother because I believe that he believes what we believe. He believes that Jesus is God. I promise you, 99% of you guys, if you began to start explaining, if I, if I said write a paper over the Trinity, you're going to get some marks taken off without question. But again, um, what you need to know, according to Jesus, is that Jesus is God. That that Jesus and Marcus believes that Jesus is God. He believes the Holy Spirit is God. Obviously, he believes God is God. And so and he doesn't believe that, that God, one moment is God the Father, one moment he's the Holy Spirit, one moment he, he doesn't believe that. So we're good. Now, as Marcus fleshes this out, and as we give grace to Marcus to be like us, <laughs> which is kind of arrogant, uh, or as he gives grace for us to be like, as we give grace to each other to grow, then amen. And so again, let me just reiterate this as we get ready to close. Guys, 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 ladies and gentlemen, let me drink my coffee one last time before I say this. I called Marcus all kind of stuff. And I apologize. I might, I, doggone, I might have to go back and take down one of my favorite videos, the snake video. I might have to take it down. But uh oh, what happened? Uh oh. Oh, my battery's probably dying. I can change it out, but I'm listening. Okay. So I can I can I can go back and take all those videos down. I can go back and what have you. I said, no, he didn't get cut off. He's still there. He's still there. But I apologize for me saying anything that was unbecoming or offensive. My intent is not to offend anybody. But we always said, man, we need to have Marcus here. I bet I bet Marcus wouldn't come on this show. Well, Marcus is here. And we're having a conversation and it's cordial. And Mar again, Marcus reached out to me. Marcus showed humility. Marcus showed wisdom and so forth. So, so we're good. And if you think Marcus needs to be corrected, Marcus is here. The Bible says, if any of you are, there he is right there looking. If any of you with his bald head, <laughs> if any of you think that you are a spirit, if a person has overcome anything, then you who are spiritual, Restore them. If you don't have it within you to restore a brother, to bring a brother closer to him, then maybe you're not as spiritual as you think. So, guys, I want to thank y'all. This is this has been wonderful. This has been amazing. Uh, and it took me about 80% of the time through to realize that Marcus was bald, which means we definitely going to rock with Marcus. So, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Marcus is bald, <coughs> so that's a good thing. Uh, but um, I love the fact that we can have this conversation. We can sit and talk. Um, I said to someone else, all I've got is what I see on YouTube. And if I disagree, if I disagree, it wouldn't it be good if I can talk to you? Hey, what do you mean by this? Or, Hey, I didn't like what you said. Fine. But I can't do that if we don't have a conversation and our conversation, our conversation 
took place, ladies and gentlemen, offline. We didn't come. We didn't. Hey, let's 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 get on YouTube and have this hash this out. No, we talked offline first. And so you know what? This might be beneficial for the body to see. So, Marcus, brother, I'm gonna let you say uh, uh, some words before, before we go. But I, thank you so much, man, for showing up. I I, I really do appreciate I that. Enjoyed it. I I God honest truth. I enjoyed it. Uh, I respect you, man of God. I know you're a real man of God. There's no doubt in my mind. You know, saying that you're you're a real one, you're going to heaven, you know, whether you agree on everything or not. And I, the only thing I would like to say, you know, just give me grace, guys. The God honest truth is before I leave, I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to pray. And I'm going to say, Lord, is there anything that I failed to see or that, you know, I just couldn't see? And I'm going to ask God to show me. But also, some of you, I've seen this comment like a million times in the comment section saying, you know, when is he going to, uh, you know, repent for all the times he was wrong? Well, that was one of the points why I wanted to come on here. Maybe consider that, you know, especially with uh, me clarifying what I've always believed. Like, for example, the Jesus is God thing. Maybe you just took some information and you ran with it, right? Instead of, you know, studying or researching for yourself. Like, I've always pretty much for the most part, um, you know, believed and said some of the similar things. Some things have changed. But don't put it past the point where it's like, well, maybe you listen to somebody say something about me and they took what I said out of context. That's possible, too. You know, so all I know is God is going to judge every word that comes out of my mouth. He's going to hold me accountable for every video that I put on YouTube. He's going to hold me accountable for every message that uh, I preach over here at the church. And so pray for me. All right? That's that's all I can say, whether you like me, whether you think I'm this or that pray for me. And my heart is that I just wish we could come together, give the people Jesus, plant that seed. And I believe that if we do that and people have a genuine encounter with the word and the presence of God in this crazy world that we're living in, my goal is to set them on the path to study and just seek God for themselves. Because at the end of the day, you know, myself, uh, the man of God here, we're all going to have to stand before God and nobody else is going to be there, you know? And so that's kind of how I look at it. I always tell people, pray about everything that I say. Anybody who watches me on YouTube, they know every video. I say, look, don't take my word for it. Don't put me on a pedestal. Uh, I'm not perfect. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. But you got to seek God for yourself. If you don't agree, seek God for yourself. And that's just my heart, man of God. So I appreciate you. I honor you. I thank you for having me on here, and I thank you just for being so uh, so kind. I'm, I'm even getting a little teary-eyed. I know that's a little extra. I could be emotional at times, but uh, you know, I'm used to people just they say that they're a Christian, but it's clear like you hate me. You know, like you you it, it comes out in the way that they like they they get so angry and so like some of these guys, man. I've gotten threats and people want to fight and stuff, you know, and <laughs> you don't, don't, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? But the way you handled it, you handled it with grace. And I just really respect that. And I really appreciate that. And uh, it means a lot to me. And I want to, I want to say that to you. And I'm definitely going to pray about everything that we talked about and just continue to pray for me, man of God, Yeah. you know, that, that I grow. And I just want God to be pleased at the end of the day. People might think I'm just saying stuff to say stuff, but that's really my heart. I want God to be pleased, you know, with what I'm doing. And I want people to go to heaven. So, Amen. Uh, we're gonna go uh, pray uh, on our way out all together. And I bet not to you cry. Listen, you you ball. You don't cry in public. We don't do. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Listen, one. I I, I know. I know what he's saying. Uh, I have had people threaten me. I had one guy said he wants to do. So I said, I tell you, listen. Tell me where your email is so I can email you my address. <laughs> I was shooting shots back at him, but I shouldn't do that. But 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 the humble way is to that stuff gets you after a while. Sometimes folks say some stuff and, and it's easy to kind of respond back or whatever. But um, how he how he did this, guys, this was amazing. So this is for for me. This is for Marcus. Uh, this is for everybody that we disagree with and disagree with me and so forth. This is for all of us. Lord, God, we just thank you. God, we all have a past. We all are messed up. The beauty about our salvation is that you didn't come to save folks that don't mess up. You came to save folks that mess up and know they mess up. You came to save folks with a past. You came to save folks that are uh, from a broken home. You come to save folks that have broken some homes. You come to save folks who have said some vile things and done vile things. You've saved some folks who, Lord God, didn't want to have anything to do with you, but you came nonetheless and you paid the price.
So how dare we say that nobody is above forgiveness, reconciliation, that no one is allowed to be wrong, that no one can uh, think differently than us. God, all we know is one thing that matters, and that is we have Christ. If you are led by the Spirit of God, meaning that you've placed your faith in Christ, then you've told us that we are the sons and daughters of God, and that's all that matters. The other things as growing in, in, in the knowledge of the Lord, that's important. Help us to do so, Lord, in a godly fashion. If someone were to reach out or we were to reach out, we pray that that hum, humble spirit will be reciprocated. So God, have your way in us in this live stream, uh, in the subsequent videos, in churches, in our homes, Lord God. Have your way in the body. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I look forward to seeing you guys later. Uh, I've got some homework to go do. I'm, I look forward to even going back and reading you guys' comments and the, the live stream chats, which I do sometime. I'm going to do that today. So anyway, guys, I love you so much. In the meantime, go find somebody to hug, to bless. If they don't know the Lord Jesus, go preach the gospel to somebody in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.